look at that busy airport, man. I know we're early, but who's going to complain? Mind you, some people may be out riding their bicycle. Well, finish it to uh, finish it off three. Should be uh, showered and done by four. <laughs> but he's early, isn't he? Okay, folks. A uh, big switch of uh, operations today. Of course, um, as you can see, we've got some pretty moody weather to our east. Looking on the radar, and there's uh, lightning strikes and all sorts going on over um, over London at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on arrivals, of course. Um, see the doors open. Uh, even that shot's nice. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a big boy lined up here. Glasses are still steeped up. Oh, that's nice, that breeze. Got a lot, load of lads all standing up there who are uh, all in their shorts and everything. It's going to get a bit mental in a bit. Let's see how long they last up here. They're all facing us off to Dubai, I believe. Oh, no, oh, sorry, sorry, what am I talking about? Stupid. Uh, the one facing us, which actually isn't on radar. Uh, the Boston bound 380 is on radar. I'm not seeing the other one. What's going on? No, none of these are Arthur, are they? Hey! That's Arthur, mate. Arthur Winglet. <laughs> we call him Arthur Winglet. Uh, Arthur, folks, just because uh, there is your normal winglet um, design complete upper and lower segment as well it's not all one piece um, so an upper and a lower segment and I'm guessing um, you know those those uh, do have also um, static wicks attached to them you can't really see them from here but they're uh, it's specifically for um, for lightning and, f and um, channeling the lightning away from the aircraft uh, through one side and out the other, literally. Uh, the whole aircraft has um, a shell inside it, a netting. Um, the, um, oh, what do I always forget? Something, um, Rack your brains now, all the stuff that you've learned. Come on, think. It's the. It's a fella's name, I know that. <laughs> Faraday Cage. I think it's I think it's Mr. Faraday who invented it. I think. Anyway, folks, here we go. What a way to start a show. Um, interesting the uh, the um, amount of time these aircraft are waiting. I don't know what this Euro Wings is doing. He should have been long gone. The Faraday cage. Jilly, uh, at some point, do you have the um, do you have the uh, the map <laughs> this time? Should we try and do everything in the show and make sure that we. So I'll get it done then. Come on, son. It gets dark at half nine. A lot of people waiting for you. A lot of line up and wait scenarios going on here. Maybe, I can't think that it's a weather related issue. The, um, everything looks good. From a distance. Uh, so anyway, in your own time, sir or madam. You do have it, you do have it. Awesome. 
CFM56 powered 320. See the um, see those um, doors on the side at the back on the back segment of the engine. That's where the uh, reverser doors open up, um, throwing the air into a sort of like vertical wall of air. Got some good stuff lined up here, folks. Hope you're doing well. Well fed this afternoon, I trust, with whatever um, uh, luncheon you did have. 380 heaven right now. Look at this. Look at this. Cool. Ben. Ah, this is what it is. We're waiting for the... Now, that's interesting. A runway inspection with an aircraft on it. It generally does not happen. So, what's happened is that there's been some kind of a... Well, we can't reverse, mate. <laughs> Chat with the ATC. So, you're going to have to leave it there. Right, okay, well, why didn't they wait until the... Um... It's too much of a hold-up, I'm guessing. Wow. That's painfully slow, in it, for any pilot who's sitting there with... <laughs> Now, are they going to go either side of this jet? Or are they going to peel off? Uh, are they going to go round it to the far edges of the runway, uh, or are they both going to come off? I wouldn't have thought they both. Are they going to? He is going. They are going long. They're going long. There we go. Yeah. See if we get a little. Uh... Thank you. Oh no, he's done. He's. Okay, so uh, he said, no, no, not that way, not that way. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just uh, clear take off. Uh, mind you, they've got to get out of the way from the jet blast first. So they've got to pick their way through this taxiway because you've obviously got a set of Rolls-Royce <laughs> Trent engines blowing out some pretty hot air there. So um, they're going to have to take a long route and go over the grass probably, I'd imagine. There we go. Uh, so as to avoid, look at these, uh... wow, what a great sight, become a patrol officer or whatever it is, uh, you know, ground crew um, team at London Heathrow and this is the sort of stuff you get to see on a regular basis, making a long wide berth and holding I think they're gonna hold. I think they're gonna hold that position. Yeah, these held as well. Hold on, Stan! Right, we are back in action, live London, yeah? I've just, I've just, I've just, I've just, it was slightly out, mate. That might have, that might have done it. Sorry, folks. Big happy 777 Rolls Royce Trent 800s. Look at his big smiley face. He's very happy to go flying. Another 380 coming out, folks. Four in the lineup, ladies and gents. So if you're a 380, uh, fanatic, know all your stuff about the uh, A380. Now's your time to shine on the on the chat. If you're a member coming here, give us some stats on the A380. Let me re read them out. That would be pretty cool. 80 metre wingspan, wider than she is long. British assembled wings. Another. Bit of 
an early one, I'm a bit of an early one, I think, but here comes a thumbnail, folks. Here comes a thumbnail. Here comes the thumb, and I say it's all right. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. Look at that. She's a dirty girl. Now this is, um, we call her Arthur, or it Arthur, because it only has one, uh, the, the left-hand side, the, the port side of the aircraft only has the upper segment of its uh, winglet. Uh, the other piece is going to obviously be replaced uh, during a D-check, I'd imagine. Fire it up! Wow, N1's a bit late on that, isn't it? Here we go! Here the valves all closing off. Don't know if, can, if we're going to get to see. There she is. There's the uh, upper segment of her winglet. See that little uh, flap that's um, moving ever so slightly there. That's uh, that's the aileron section, folks. So even though um, the rudder is uh, is mainly now, it's just the pilot keeping it in a straight line, uh, using the power, and then waiting for that V1 moment around about 160 knots. Little pull of the. Uh, Wow, so, there it is. Ah, oh, she's off. I think this is the Boston bound jet, isn't it? Oh, easy. Oh, Dallas, right. Wow, steep climb out. All of a sudden, pull on the stick. We have rain, folks. We have rain. Here it comes. What's the matter where we are? Come on. <laughs> oh, good lad. Watch it from in there, man. Watch me get battered, yeah? You just enjoy yourself, yeah? <laughs> Good that that fix was what it was, Jim. No, I'm going to go. Uh turbulent air from that previously departed 380 uh, would have been the reason for that uh, slight delay on the takeoff for uh, for that small Austrian jet uh, should I go for the uh, should I go for the the Cape Crusader um, Hey, is there a, is there a, is there a, you know you get um, super fat, uh, super, uh, you know, like um, Batman and Robin and all that. Go with me on this one. Is there a character called Cider Man? Well, you know. Okay, here we go, folks. Sorry about that. Right, just getting me, uh, getting me act together because I'm in my, uh, I'm in my poncho now. <laughs> it's a bit, 
It's a bit like a. It's a bit like a. It's a bit like a sh an apron. I don't like it, man. It's blowing all over the gaff. But I guess it'll be all right. I'm boiling up now, <laughs> just because of a few spots of rain. Still looking at what, GP? About. Big doors open on that hangar with British Airways. Long landing. Nice. That's nice. Flown on one of those. Feel good to have flown on one of United's uh, 767s, to be honest. I had the experience. Proper sort of like hardcore jet, in it? Big alloy wing and very stiff. Get that impression when you're flying on it. Neo powered. Interestingly, uh, British Airways previous fleet all powered by the IAE uh, engine, the V2500, I think. Um, high bypass ratio turbofan, but not mega high bypass like those new Leap engines. So British Airways switching engine suppliers for their uh, for their Neo jets to uh, CFM, which is General Electric. Um, it is actually the Leap engine, but it is actually the replacement of, for the CFM 56 engine. Um, Hold on a minute, that's a bit late, wasn't it? Was that a very late go around, Jilly? Have we got some... Uh... Fire it up. Wow, big drops as well, man. Big drops. Here we go. Oh, what do I film? What do I film? Sorry, folks. Sorry, a very sudden. I'm getting done here. I'm getting done. Sorry, folks, just uh, another one. Look a minute. Got some serious wind shit going on over there that is obviously not with me yet. But I can assure you that that weather's going to get pretty intense, man. Obviously, it is. I know, man, I know. But I'll get them from here as well, Jilly. No, you can't be everywhere, man. I'll get them from here. So watch approaching aircraft now, uh, keeping an eye on it. So who's firing up their engines? One of those Neos or something? Nice little 220. Okay, just gonna grab this 350 folks, just in case, see if we've got some wind shear. Obviously that's gonna be, have been reported by the previous aircraft that did the go around. So these guys are aware now that they've got some uh, pretty harsh conditions on the way on the way down from sort of like 200 feet and below by the looks of it. Doesn't seem to be struggling that much, I've got to be honest. It's when you see the wingtip. Easy. Oh, thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder.
Big drops, man, big drops. Warning, warning. Camera. Sorry, folks, just getting the camera under the blah, blah. Ah. Ah. Lock it out on this uh, on this 220 for a second, folks. Just need to get myself a little bit more because it's wind with this rain. Full wind, and it's pretty gnarly now, man. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, son. You are. Okay, just keep an eye on that one. Yeah, it seems that sort of like, uh, what's that pocket, wasn't it? I'm not sure as it's, uh... oh, easy, son, easy. Oh, is there a crosswind there of some sort? Or... Nice group of planes there, I like that. 767, A330, 200, I think. <laughs> oh, look at the bleeding, look at the... Easy, easy, go round! Wow! That's some pretty intense rain right there, man. Can't be a visibility thing. That wasn't a wind shear go around. That was just a, uh, a directive from the, uh, from the flying pilot. Um, or actually, I think sometimes, does the... Uh, funky shy, funky shy. Funky shot the nerve. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna get gnarly, man. This just big grey cloud to the left of me. Absolutely no. Look at him avoiding the clouds, man. Look at him taking that diver. Look at that on flight radar, man. See what that's like. Yeah! Hey! Hope you're all sitting comfortably and uh, enjoying your Sunday afternoon. Whilst I uh I take it on for you. Oh, this is harsh. This is harsh. No, 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 I want the poncho on. The big question is how long will the poncho last? Okay, start your clocks. Let's see how long the poncho lasts. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now that is wind shear. That is wind shear. His gear is uh, wind shear, wind shear. So the gear was staying down, then they'll uh, get the aircraft into a configured position, happy to go flying, and then uh, deal with getting the aircraft reconfigured. But yeah. Wow, struggling over on 27 left, man. Malaysian 350.
just about now. It's around about the point of wind shear. Decision point. Minimums. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Oh, that's a long landing, man. He's got it down beautifully, though, man. Yeah. Wow, look at this build-up over here, folks. So we got uh, the fella that I met at... Um, I can't believe Denver Town. I can't believe Denver But anyway, it is what it is. But, oh, tell you what. I want to the... Uh, the front, front, front. Yeah. commonly called wizard which is where the engines are intaking around about a ton of air per second gulping that air at the front suck squeeze bang blow and you'll see a uh, little vortex like a little whirlwind that we call a wizard um, at the leading edge the lower lower part of that intake as it sucks the uh, the water literally off the ground. Anything around it, it just ingests, which is why you don't want to have any foreign object debris. See it? Oh, blimey, look at this. In your own time, mate. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> He's a bit impatient, isn't he? Oh, mate, this is just crazy. This is crazy. I've never seen anything like it. I thought that other one was crazy, but this guy wants to go as well, look. What the? What in the hell's going on here, boy? Oh, mate. They're, getting, they're clearing the runway, mate. What's going on? Oh, they're not switching ops, are they? No. I don't know. This is, I've never seen anything like it in my life. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this happen. And I can't think that there would be. Let's go round again. Wow, severe weather conditions here at London Heathrow. No, this will be, this is, this is very recent, Jimmy, man. I mean, everyone you have time to bleed in there. Oh, you mean switch the operation to me? The operational changes. This is insane. Literally going the full length for the runway. What about arrivals? Still got arrivals on the southern. He's holding. He's happy to hold. Or is he? No, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it all the way. No? I think it's just because of the... Can you see the rain? Can you see the sheets of rain? Look at this, man. Have you ever seen anything like this before, man? Is that our man from Amsterdam, perhaps, going... Uh, the, the guy that brought me the sausage rolls? Is this one of them? This is insane, man. Look at this guy just powering up. Yeah, but only if it's... Yeah, lightning, yes. But if it, if otherwise, I'm... Yeah, but why are they... Why is... The, why are arrivals... Has that cell perhaps got some serious 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Hot damn diggity dough um, is the... Uh, Oh, lightning! 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 Yeah, they're all heading over to zero nines, mate. They're all heading over to the southern runway. Yeah, they will switch back at some point. Okay. No, they're just all they're all they're all bunching up down the bottom one there, not knowing, I guess. Wow, they're even doing it with a Qatar jet as well, man. So you know there's some uh, interesting conversations going on between the uh, the first officer or the captain. Ladies and gentlemen, due to adverse weather conditions, what we're uh, what we've been asked to do by London Air Traffic Control is to make our way down to the end of the runway with all the other departing aeroplanes where we are uh, going to be heading up to another runway for departure. Um, this is going to take us, add on about another 30 minutes, I reckon, to each of these jets. He's going to be on a big queue of jets right now. If not more than 30 minutes. And my bum is getting wet. Is this... Uh Really, really. Look at the look at the bands of rain. Can you see the can you see the rain there? That huge curtain of rain. Look at that. How beautiful is that? If you're a meteorologist or a or a purveyor of weather or somebody who really enjoys seeing stuff like that, like I do. It really is a case of the beauty of the beast, isn't it? See, it's clearing over there on the, uh, on the southern edge of the runway. I think they've... I think they've... I think the reason for depart the change in runway operations is not so much for departures, folks, but more for arrivals. Uh, because there's obviously a big report of... Mind you, hold on a minute. They're getting worse over here, wouldn't they? They get proper shed effect. holding all arrivals over all the different, yeah, Virgin pushing back, going out to the southern. Mind you, no, hold on a minute, that wouldn't be pushing back from there, would it? That, that's just come off remote, hasn't it? Whoa, big flash. Here we go. Man, that was a big flash. Come on, Poncho, do your stuff, mate. Don't blow up like a big giant skirt, exposing my backside, and you're not doing your work properly, are you, son? Hey, Bleeding egg. I felt like a woman with a skirt on then. Ooh, it's blown up all up there, look. 
Right, I'm going to... Crazy flooding in Spain last week. Way we can try and arrange a towel or something. with American stamps on them before and they've, and they've reached. Well, I think so. <laughs> I must, no one's written to us and said, oh, I'm from America and I, I wrote in for a stamp and I haven't received it. I know I've uh, wrote in for a stamp, <laughs> wrote in for a sticker uh, or requested a sticker. Um, wow, did you see that? Did you catch that? Did we catch that on the... Bloody hell. <laughs> hey, did you catch that one, Jilly? Watch that, 20 seconds in. Oh, I love weather, man. Oh, I love weather. Did you catch it? Or did we not catch it? But it's in that cell right there. Look on the comments. Look on tick comments, like. Right, definitely don't want to be um, rubbing my head frantically now, do I? <laughs> do you remember like you used to do with a balloon on your head? <laughs> and then stick it to the wall or whatever it was. Bang off in the distance there, man, down the east. Or it was just... There's one. Big gnarly thing, man. Of course, the, uh, the lightning travels from the ground up to the cloud. I don't know if you're aware of that, uh, but I did hear it from a bloke down the pub once. No, oh, no, no, don't do that, son. There's another one. There's another one, Jilly, there's another one. That's, that's right over the house, isn't it? Woo at least he's going away from me. I haven't got any rain at the moment to contend with. Sure, we'll be back on uh, aeroplane, aer aeroplane, aeroplane operations in a moment, folks. Now, here's something interesting. What's going on here, then? Why are they all going that way now? Oh, they're not coming back up here, are they? Oh, here comes more rain. Dun, 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 dun. Are they sending everyone back to stand? Perhaps. Really? I wouldn't have thought so in these conditions. Blimey. Uh, oh, there's another one. Kaboom in three, two, one. Minus five. <laughs> no, 
Yeah. Oh, they're not going on. They're chasing the zero nines. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. not on the forecast was it that was not anywhere near on the forecast man no no i mean look at the sulk look at the sulk look at the socks it... direct southerly mate it's a direct southerly Tomorrow? Why, 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 why are we uh, being off that? I don't understand it. Well, folks, there's very little we can do here as the lightning and the cell moves off. Let's just. Uh, I don't, I don't really want to bring the phone out because we uh, got all another one of those. Uh, um, um, I must have left my waterproof iPhone case somewhere. Um, and uh, so as a result, uh, on a, I think on an overseas trip or something like that, I think it must have been. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, that has uh, meant that I don't have a waterproof. So I must reorder another one. Would have done it right now, but I can't because it's raining. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a direct. Is that plane over the top? Or is that? Uh, is that? Is that? Um... Blimey, you're only getting it now. I've had it for about ten minutes. Even longer. Yeah. So, folks, uh, it looks as though, yeah, we've had our first arrival on Zero Nine. Brave uh, pilots. See how safe your aeroplane is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these guys fly right the way through the, uh, well, I would say the eye of the storm, wouldn't you? Ooh. Yeah, definitely. It's nothing like, I'm not. Because I've got rubber shoes on and all that kind of thing. I mean, I've, I think I'm safe and I'm... It's not like I'm standing a bowl of static. Big one. Wow, lightning going on all over the place. Of course, uh, the, the, the sound that you get, the thunder, which is the crack of the electrical charge, I'm guessing. Um, generally, when you count per second I think that is how far away it is <laughs> I did hear that when I was a kid though and I've carried it with me all the way through to the nearly the uh, ripe old age of 60 years old now someone's gonna say well actually it's not it's 5.8 kilometers or something like that so uh, so blow my uh, lovely childhood thing out of the water why don't you it's usually count one two three four five six and all that and that will uh, indicate the uh, approximate mileage uh, from shop uh, now look at that really hitting the uh, western end of the airfield terminal five completely blanketed in heavy heavy rain um, so anything arriving which uh, again well done to that um, pilot don't worry i'll take it from here flash of lightning just for the hell of it. Right, let's try and catch the next one, shall we? Uh, we haven't had a... We haven't had a go around it. Oh, here comes the... Sh here comes the water into the shoes. Here it comes. <laughs> I can feel it. First on the toes. Here it is. 
it is what it is. Man. Uh, like, uh, can't, I just cannot see anything on approach. Oh, hold on a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that in the distance that's going? Going completely, that's a go around. Blimey, O'Reilly, look how late that is. Or early that is, sorry. Wow, that's Bluebird, is it? Wow, can you see it or not? Is that in focus? That's a long way out, man. It's just uh, climbing out into that. So that's a go around. Yeah, far too intense, folks. Uh, operations still continuing at London Heathrow. Uh, however, they haven't sent anything out of uh, 09 left ha yet, have they? From what I see. Wow, big queue of aircraft down at, uh, at runway 209 uh, right at the moment. Oh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Oh, lightning. Is it lightning? Is it like lightning? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, apologies for the uh, lack of action at the moment, ladies and gents. Have a look over at British Airways maintenance hangar. Uh, to be honest with you, normally when I see those jets in there, they normally got the APU doors open. This seems to be quite a regular thing with that, but that looks like an engine-related inspection of some sort, I'd imagine. Um, wouldn't be any major maintenance checks. I don't think they do... There, even their A checks down here. Maybe they do. Maybe they do do A checks here at, at London Heathrow. Uh, but then anything that gets a little bit beyond that, you know, B, C, and D. Well, maybe the B checks here as well. I don't know. Just the amount of time it takes for them to be uh, off the line, but also taking up the um, the, the the space inside the sheds, uh, which is at a premium. Let's be honest. And of course, uh, British Airways, uh, well actually, London Heathrow, um, leasing that XBA shed, which we were very fortunate enough to um, film from when the um, BOAC 747 uh, arrived back at Heathrow for the first time. A big ceremony and everything, and then uh, a year later, uh, she is no more, or however long later on down the line it was. Uh, which was a, a real shame for everybody, I have to be honest with you. British Airways, of course. Uh, although, you know, we know for a fact that, you know, really, British Airways or any airline really doesn't... I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know. There are people, there are people within airlines who are who have a, 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 have a, um, a passion for aviation. I mean, it's obviously a better thing if you're involved um, with a, a big business a big airline or a big manufacturer or whoever it might be that you're actually a um a fan of aviation yourselves because it will help your business grow and if you're in a position where you can uh, be at the, uh, the 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 sharp end and hands-on with uh you know marketing and promotions and all that kind of thing okay okay another go around that was an aircraft over the top of me then that i i did here So uh, we're just waiting for this. Uh, is it worth me going into the uh, going and see if I can get a couch? I look like an idiot though. I do look. Could be like, oh! Call the police, there's a madman around. Uh, it might. I'm Cider Man. <laughs> Have you got any cider? Um, now that's interesting. I've got a 380, Jilly, to my right, which is pointing in this direction. And it's the Qatar 380. And the sock is back to southerlies, mate. It's, uh, sorry, southwesterlies. 
uh, we're going to be changing operations very, very soon indeed. Um, right, let me just uh, let me just see. I'm carrying the phone. I'm tele carrying the telephonic communications device, Gillian, uh, in my pouch. <laughs> right, a bit like Skippy, you know. What's that, Skip? Bloke's gone down to get a towel. What do you mean? Who made it down? This is how long time it's looking. The dry ones are now. That's a good thing, to be honest. Uh, that means that I don't... I'm not actually in too much of a rush to do that because... But that just means that that cell's coming in my direction then if the wind sucks showing that. So we are... Uh, we're in for some more folks, that's for sure. And if you're in any way... Um, look how clear it is now down there. It's very clear. How quickly that's cleared. Terminal 5 now in... Well, I wouldn't say full view, but... Uh, there's a landing Hedo plane there. Probably the last one. KLM 737 in from Amsterdam, more likely. Um, he will be reporting back to ATC uh, to say that he's just landed in a in a tailwind. Um, in tailwind distance. Oh, it's gone all Kate Bush. Out on the wily windy morning. How could you leave me when I needed you? Don't sing. I loved you too. It's me, Cathy, I've come home. <laughs> definitely, definitely looking like coming back out too. What a waste of time. Well, not waste of time, but what a, what a, why didn't they just hold them there and just say, right, okay, you've got the option, folks. Now I've got to change my bleeding sticks again. Because of the wind direction. Oh, say it again. <laughs> Ops guys are uh, hard at it. Now it's now it's uh, gusting. It's gusting. It's gusting. Uh, you see the um, the cloud moving to the north, away from us. Which oh, that's a go around. Can you hear it? Yeah, got him over the top. I'm going to start seeing... Uh, no. Oh, I don't know. I probably have, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, yes. Another go around. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, I have to say... Um, quite bizarre conditions here at London Heathrow. Um, oh, here we are, still uh, still bringing them in. Dreamliner, I think. Possibly the, uh, the last one, because he's definitely uh, in a tailwind scenario right there. Might get a bit of um, reverser power. Nice, go on, son. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Wow! You see, it doesn't blow the uh, blow the water forward, folks. It blows it sideways, uh, horizontally, uh, as a wall of air. I think that was um, that was um, screaming emu. Uh, our very own member, A220 pilot. Um, with JetBlue, who uh, told us that. Where are you, mate? Where are you? 
Tja. <laughs> Stay right in the afternoon. Just uh, contemplating their next move. Yeah, for the time being, if you can. But you're going to be changing it back again, aren't you? Go around. That was quite late. Whoa, who's he? Who's he? I don't think you want to be climbing out into that, do you? You want to keep a quite a low altitude. That's definitely wind shear related. See their undercarriage still down. It'll probably maintain a relatively low altitude, I would have thought. Wouldn't want to really climb out into this stuff. Well, we got them all today. Yeah. Film live at the Courtyard Mary. Yeah. We love you guys. We love you guys. Yeah. <coughs> Hold on, got another one, GP. Might have another one on there. Sweet dreams in the night. Nope, that's not worked, is it? Hold on a minute. That was a dry one. Sorry, folks. Wow, 21 aircraft in the lineup to go out, folks. Also, consider that will, they will be taking, a, obviously, a different route than they would have pre-planned in their flight management computer. You know, an easterly or westerly departure. So they have to change a few things on their flight plan. Not all of them, obviously, they just have to take a different sort of route to it, to their sort of like first waypoint. And of course, let's all um, remember, we hear that aircraft are diverting to Stansted, folks. Um, almost all, always remember, folks, uh, to give a big load of thought to these uh Ladies and gentlemen who work so tirelessly at uh, National Air Traffic Control Services um, as well as all the other uh, uh, air traffic controllers around the world but in situations like this where it's totally out of the norm where they have to control the traffic it's also not just the airport air traffic control but other, other um, stations that have to uh, monitor their movements and so on and so forth. Of course, all the weather stations and uh, everybody involved in uh, when it's conditions like these. So obviously things may be improving slightly as that uh, cell 
moves north. That heavy rain is literally right on the approach path now. To Azerbaijan. Uzbekistan, sorry. Wow. This is unheard of. Never had this before. No departures uh, until further notice, ladies and gentlemen. Can you believe it? David Carvanel, thank you for that uh, report. That's, uh, of course, Windsor is in that direction. And as you can see, that cell right there is what these aircraft are approaching through. I'm quite surprised, to be honest with you, because looking to my east, the, uh, the conditions actually don't look too bad. It's just out to the west. You know what's happening here? It's, it's, it's actually, um, it's like a wheel within a wheel, and a buried in a cell, and a part of a thing, and a CD, da da da, and a ba da 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 da, but a da 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 da. What's that, GP? Dave, what's that? All right. Is that Bluebird? That's the one that went around, isn't it? Um, oh, is it Eater? Sorry. Departure, departure. Okay, there's your until further notice done. Because uh, like I said, clear skies kind of uh, what well, far clearer skies for them to depart into uh, regardless if it there is um, I'm just surprised that they uh, that they're not switching back to two sevens Or is it? Well, I was going to say, is it because of the is it because of the the conditions are better on that side than they are on this side? Well, to be honest with you, over there it seems absolutely fine on approach. Um, you can still see that departing aircraft. It's probably already at about three thousand feet or two thousand feet or something like that. Um, whereas to my west, it's a bleeding mess. I was. <laughs> Man's got to eat, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, flash right over the top of me then. Rain, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. What on? Well, there'll be massive delays, won't there? Well, um, have we got uh, have we got anything on? Uh, I know we've got a huge lineup, Jilly, but you know, one departure. Um, that's a bit crazy, isn't it?
Well, yeah, I know, I know you would say that, but if, if you look to the east, it's actually not, it's nothing like what it is to the west. And this rain is coming in from the west, unless the whole thing is spiraling, Jilly. Like a big circular, like a hub, you know? Right, because this is coming in from the, um, almost like as if it's coming in from the north. Yeah. So that's a sharp right turn for this small jet. That's something we don't often see, almost like an air display type departure. Yeah, love to be on that plane right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to take a bit of a uh, sharper turn than normal. Don't be alarmed. Uh, even though I used to be a, a fairground um, uh, entrepreneur. On the whip, on the whip. Hold tight, hold tight, long fast ride. Come on, girls. The louder you scream, skin like leather. Oh, wow, really? Wow, look at that departure there, man. That's insane. That's what you call me. <laughs> That's what you call avoiding a cell. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in my life. Oh, now this is quite a nice phenomenon to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sometimes see this trail of uh, of water from the vo from the vortex. It's literally the water that just peels off the wings, and you get this sort of like you know. Oh my goodness me, are you serious? Wow, that's pretty crazy. Aircraft that diverted up to Stansted, did you say, has, deport, has, has aborted the landing at Stansted and now coming back to Heathrow. Uh, it's quite interesting uh, what's going on here. Shout me if anything's if anything's uh, lined up for. Yeah, this is definitely spiralling around, isn't it? It's not. It's not going north, east, south, or west, is it? It's sort of like hanging over us at the moment. Uh, even though in some sections it's looking relatively clear. Okay, got it. Let's see what this next uh yeah but that'll be delayed that'll just be delayed radar let's see what this guy does yeah man i ain't going anywhere <laughs> little bit of rain Now he's going straight. So he's obviously quite uh, quite confident. Goes to the left, correction left. I was going back to standstill, flipping it. Uh, you want to make your mind up, mate, because uh, you know fuel is. Uh, I mean, obviously they have a huge amount of fuel reserves in terms of, you know, for diversions, particularly for that. All calculated in uh, on the flight management system. Uh, and they even have a, uh, they even have a, um, a backup of the backup, if you know what I mean. Oh my God, T3 to T5. Uh, you have to get the train. If you're going from T3 to T5. Uh, oh, blimey, T3. Yeah, you've got to go and get the train. That's a long walk back, that is. Actually, no, hold on a minute, T3. No, that's fine. It's the one at the end, that T2, which is the long walk. Um, yeah, T3, right slap bang in the middle there. You'll be able to get the train. Very easy, very decent service. Uh, train service here at London Heathrow. Uh, terminal connections. See, that's a low departure, that is.
Yeah, if you're on Flight Radar 24 right now, folks, who we uh, we work very closely with um, the great guys at Flight Radar 24. Hello to everybody or anybody who's watching um, on Flight Radar. We know that they watch the show from time to time. Uh, it'd be quite interesting to watch it during these uh, particular conditions. Here we go, look. Now, what's going on here? Hello, hello, hello. We've got three units coming out, and I don't think this is a drill. I think this is uh, certainly... Well, that wouldn't be a fuel-related issue in terms of, like, you know, lack of fuel. Uh, unless, of course, there's an aircraft that is dangerously low on fuel and uh, needs to come in immediately. Um, but I don't think so. I think that's possibly even a fuel spill or something. There's another unit down there. Now, they're definitely lining up um, to, uh, to look as though they're getting ready for, uh, for someone right at the runway's edge man that's uh <clears throat> yeah possibly a lightning strike um and like i said these things have got static wicks uh, on the on the wings of the aircraft the surfaces that are most prone to being struck by lightning or the electrical charge um and they uh, they can and will uh, blow off literally um uh, as the lightning passes through them uh, and they're obviously a replaceable item. We believe that that may be what happened with um, the, the A380 that has half a winglet. Half a winglet. Okay, so it is possibly a mate, like I said, a Mayday fuel aircraft that's dangerously low on fuel. wanted to get that plane stopped didn't they uh it's nothing it's not fire or anything folks it's oh, fire fire the, the fair's on fire no that's um that's just uh water spray uh being wow look at those conditions man beautiful beautiful shot sheets of rain incredible incredible um yeah now we don't know which of these aircraft is as they say um dangerously low on fuel or uh has a um, possibly a fuel warning? No, I think they've they've been called back. No, they've they've been called back. Fire units are uh, now turned to orange. So I think that um, that crisis has been averted with any luck. This is a great shot, folks. When you, especially if we've got a 380, you've got a 380 on approach, Chile, because that is just going to be it'll be messy. It will just be messy. It will be Lionel. Say 747. Oh my good god. Oh, I hope they land long. Oh, okay. This is ANA, I think. This should uh, load it up with the reverses. Here we go. Yeah! Man, that is just so gnarly, man. I mean, I obviously feel for all these people who are uh, delayed. Um, it, 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 it snowballs, doesn't it, in terms of like uh, people being inconvenienced. Um, everybody involved right the way along the line. Um, but it is one of those things, but uh, we do feel for you folks, but unfortunately you're delivering some great uh, some great footage right now. Nothing, um, nothing to be sort of like alarmed with by seeing the reverses still open. The doors are still open sometimes when they're departing the runway. It's just that the uh, pilots want to configure the aircraft, get it, uh, and they're actually working with air traffic control uh, to get their um, navigational points on the ground. 
uh, and also sometimes maybe a little bit of a delay in, in actually getting round to speaking with them um, just because of the amount of traffic that's on the ground but um, being given their uh, waypoints now on the taxiways uh, to get to gate and that's not going to go very far I think it's going to go somewhere along that line there as the uh, the conditions continue to uh, be beautiful I guess it's the best way to describe it insane man. look at that look at it it's just widening that uh, that band of rain right there There's nothing on arrivals, nothing on departures. Well, there is, obviously. Yeah, but that, what I'm talking about is the, they, 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 they're so infrequent now. Normally it's one every sort of like 40 seconds, but now it's uh, bleeding 40 minutes at this rate. But it's still beautiful to watch and see how an airport Hopes with uh, situations like these that you know are becoming more and more uh, common in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, more fr frequent. Yes, that's the correct way to describe it. Um, so uh, you know we are uh, we're in the midst of a of a uh, climatic. Global phenomenon, um, which um, I have to say, the aviation industry is one at the forefront of trying to clean up their uh, their uh, their entire system. Um, which, really, to be honest with you, is down to design of new aircraft winglets, uh, which give a, a optimal a optimum. Um, uh, uh, efficiency in terms of their aerodynamics and as a result of that mean that you burn less fuel but also of course the future the future of aviation in terms of engines and things like that where are we going folks and that's something that I'm hoping to um, to 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 get uh, um, some close up uh, some, some upfront information from the likes of Airbus and ATR with their uh, um, their next wave of uh, engine uh, electronic hybrid um, wow can you see the lines there Jilly just tell me if you can see the lines that's the fadumbadumbadumbadum that I was talking about uh, can you see that or is that uh, you can see the lines yeah you can see the lines a bit like stretch marks crazy isn't it wow uh, yeah, so um, with any luck, with any luck, we'll uh, we'll get the the um, the lowdown on uh, the Airbus A380 test bed for the new uh, electronically powered engine, all battery power. Believe it or not, I know some people find it hard to believe that you know really all electrical. We're not talking about big aeroplanes here, folks. At this point in time, we're looking at. Uh, uh, the small ATRs, you know, the turboprop era uh, being converted into, um, uh, well not converted, but built as uh, an electrically powered um, aeroplane. E-power. And that will be for regional aircraft, you know, with sort of like maximum of 100 people on board maybe maybe even, even more, far less than that i don't know you know when we're talking about a, a regional aircraft we're talking about atr you know the atr uh, 72 and um, it 
certainly anything that is powered by um, turboprop. Oh, beautiful bank shot, man. Beautiful bank shot. Oh, was he now? Oh, that means they're going to change the runways in. They're going back to 27s. He's coming back up here. Okay. Okay, this is a decent sized jet. Wow, look at that. Starting to chuck them out now. Right, how long goes it we, that, that we saw that lined up? All that time ago, man. Above the system, as high above as they can. Looks like uh, A350 on approach here. Super modern aeroplane. Carbon body, carbon wing. Proud to say that those wings are uh, made in England. Um, I think is the best way to say it. Because I know they're uh, assembled from multiple com company components, but Let's just say they're made in England. It's about the only thing we can say these days that's made in England that we're proud of. Although there are probably thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, workshops out there doing, um, doing their little thing for, uh, for British manufacturing and engineering, which is always great. Is Etihad going back to gate? Yeah, I see him. I can see him. He's going to come into shot. Oh, no, he's not. Yeah, he is. There he is there. Okay. Well, um, our rookie uh, crew member is definitely going to be... Um, wow, that's like something from Star Wars. Head for the light, Luke. Head for the light. Go for it, Chewy! Sharp right turn, Clyde. There it is. Nice, funky shot and all, man. Thrown into the mix. Smokey old Joe. Yeah. Okay, well, it's not raining anymore. Saturday night, it's gone up pretty damn quick. Wow, that, uh, that rain um, is intensifying out west, isn't it? Look at that, how small that, uh, it's all of a sudden, it's uh, it's being it's it's literally dropping everything it's got, isn't it now? Wow, winds is getting it heavy, man. Oh, big lightning strike to my right. Power surge. Big strike to my right. To my northeast, a uh, northwest. Sorry. Probably about ten miles away, I think.
know which one you're proposing. What I'm proposing, I'm frozen. And then the state of down a 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 down um, I know it's not the official term, but I think the official term is like Elias Bis Dastastius or something like that. Some technical um, Latin term or something, but you know, or it's a speed bird. It's always been a speed bird. Leave it there. Leave it. These guys normally uh, don't stick it on the reverses, just but the fact that they're stopping quite um, at this end uh, would maybe indicate that they would do, and there they go. Wow, the mist in the engine intake. Yeah, look at that. Wow, absolutely fantastic. The old undercarriage gets a proper wash, doesn't it? The underside of the Hero plane. I'll bring the phone into uh, into action now. Come on, out you come. Start talking to people. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my God, liquid detected. Blimey, that wasn't long, was it? Oh, you're moaning already, are you? Blimey. God, zero, Lord. Can't get speedos. Do you need some water wings, my phone, by any chance? You know. Hey? <laughs> Little parasol. Little pair of shoes and flip flops. And... Now, this is Virgin Atlantic, I think. Uh, 787 Dreamliner. Or is it Etihad? No, it's Virgin, isn't it? Just about to see the, their emblem as well on the. Uh... Now, what are, what's she, what's she going to do here? Nothing by the looks of it. S reverse the doors will be uh, um, open, but it uh, looks like those reverses are at idle. Engines are idle. Can't be very heavy that aircraft. Obviously not um, needing to use any uh, engine assistance. Uh, just the brakes, because of course the brakes on these aeroplanes are phenomenal. That's another thing I want to see if I can show you up close uh, when we are in Paris, folks. Um, what I am proposing, dun, 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 sorry, what I'm proposing is that we actually get to uh, film on Wednesday and Thursday of next week folks I know we did say Monday and Tuesday but um, uh, sorry the following week of course the next week we're, we're off to New York um, that's Wednesday and Thursday uh, New York with uh, first class and super class members folks see the um, retro Qatar triple seven parked up down there looking pretty smart yeah, 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 yeah. Just dismiss it, mate. Just dismiss it. It's not working, mate. Um. Hello, Liz Turner. BC. Um, is that before Christ? Uh, Les Turner, a very warm welcome to you. Ethan Upshon is a new member. Welcome all new members. If I've uh, literally, I've just turned the, after all that um, debacle with the storm and everything, folks. So I'm just trying to get back to a little bit of normality now. Uh, even though the rain continues to fall in the distance. Um, Stuart Scale Models, uh, welcome back. Um, Pussy PJ's talking about uh, New York. Yeah, uh, we've got a great uh, we've got a great vantage point at New York, folks. Um, a 
I don't know if it is. Is it on? Uh, I think it is on. Um, we found it. Um, care of um, spotter guy, didn't we, Jilly? That position out on the sitting on the duck of the bay. That's the E2 jet that we will be um, featuring also at Paris. Want to want to speak to some technicians on this thing? Talk about the you know, or designers. Talk about the reason for going with that um, extended um, wing tip rather than the uh, the vertical shark clipped style or fin style, um, which is quite popular. But quite interested to see what uh, I was quite surprised to see that the the A220 actually. Even though it does have a wing lit, uh, it's it's quite squared off, isn't it? It's quite. Um, I think this one's is uh, is the raked wing tip style, very Boeing esque. So I'm guessing. I'm guessing what they've done is looked at the options for both. Wow. So you can see how to departure. There's nothing on radar at the moment, Julie, that's uh, moving in from uh, from um, from the west, is it? It's all, it's all this stuff here, isn't it? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, man? Yeah, so we will, um, we will be um, featuring... Well, not feature. We'll obviously be focusing in on the... Um, on this e-jet as well as all the other stuff that we can do that's uh, that's on static display, the stuff that's uh, all the displaying aircraft. But we're just trying to look at the option of, um, which is this GP, is this obviously, is this Emirates? Um, we're looking at the option, or is it BA? Okay, um, but we're, we're, we're looking at the option. We're looking at the option, obviously, of, um, getting there on Wednesday, uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, to do a recce. If we can do any filming, we will, uh, like we always do. You know that. You know how we roll, really, when it... Oh, big flash, man. Missed that. That was out of shot. So still very electrically charged, that cell over there. So this should make a proper mess of the runway, this Emirates 380. Inboard reverses only on the 380. Uh, lots of people know about that. Some people don't, so you might wonder why. Oh, hold on a minute. What, what, what's happened to his outboard reverses? Well, nothing because uh, it's uh, standard on the A380. It only has inboard reverses because it only needs inboard reverses because there's so much braking power on this jet. Here it comes, already stepping on it. And she could come a long way down the runway towards us. Flipping awesome, man. Um, yeah. All but four of the wheels on that lower main gear set are uh, are braking wheels. All but four. Um, I think it's the two inboard aft wheels, um, which are always the cleanest. Funny enough, uh, because they don't have any brakes on them. There's no brake dust, um, so they get a nice wash every time, which always looks like it's a it's a new set of uh, a new set of rims on the, uh, but more often than not, it's just the fact that they are uh, they are nice and clean and um, 
break dust free. It's a bit like when you watch the race cars and they come into uh, they come in it's a heavy heavy braking circuit and they come into uh, one of the heavy braking turns and big plumes of dust. Being expelled by the wheels, um, great thing to see. Um, but yeah, how about that? Uh, Marco Castaneda has gifted a membership. Marco, thank you very much indeed. Seven and a half thousand people watching right now. Good day, everybody. Hope you're doing well, wherever you are in the world. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Have enjoyed your Sunday. Um, I think I think we've got a few a few people in uh, in Monday already, and we have got uh, New Zealand. We'll have a little look. Um, talking about the ultra long haul routes, folks, which is also quite an interesting subject in terms of, you know, um, Singapore Airlines and uh, they're going to be opening uh, because, because Qantas as well with their, um, what was it, what was the name of their Operation Sunrise or something like that with their A350, I think it's a 900 ultra long range, the ULR, or is it a, a 1000? I think it might be, a, I, think, I, I can't remember. Um, but uh, someone's going to let me know. Yeah, the ultra long haul jets. Uh, one of the one of the one of the magazines or you know the online magazines mentioned. Imagine flying all the way to LA, and then flying all the way back uh, from London Heathrow, all the way to LA, and then all the way back from New York to LA. Um, imagine that, folks, uh, on one flight. Uh, that's what we're sort of like, uh, what they're proposing, what they're proposing, do, 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 do. Um, somewhere in the region of anything from 14 through to um, 19 hours, uh, potentially, or maybe even longer, depending on um, on wind direction and uh, all those sorts of things, um, especially when you get a situation like this, where you have got some serious um, stormy weather which um, brings joy to our, uh, our viewers around the world. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, no Qantas 350 1000 uh, ULR Labyrinth saying thank you for that. It's a, oh it is a, what well, it is a 1000 or no, it is, no, there isn't a Qantas 350 1000 uh, ultra long range. Um, I seem to remember it was, uh, interestingly enough, a, uh, Uh, Sue Cruz, Me gifted membership will just come from your account, uh, I think. Um, I think that's the way they do it. Yeah, whatever payment method you're using, it will be, uh, it will be, oh, look at that. Double Saudi Arabian um, special livery. One which I call the, um, uh, the graffiti one, but it's actually not, it's, uh, it's the, the calligraphy logo or livery. Um, either way, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Um, stickers, they're, uh, they are all stickers. Most of these ones that you see on the, on the side of jets, they're uh, very uh, professionally applied. Um, unless, of course, it's on the main livery, which is a bit like that one there, which would have been applied during its, um, its phase of being painted. So are we likely, because that has absolutely dropped dead now, that has. And uh, look at that. That's a very sad looking. It's uh, <laughs> like the elephant one at, uh, still lightning going off in that, in that cell over there, folks. It's very slow moving cell, which is um, a bleeding nightmare, to be honest with you, for, uh, for, 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 for aviation in general, um, especially when you're trying to predict um, what's going to be happening in the, in the, in the next 10, 20 minutes with aircraft that are in the hold patterns and so on and so forth, because Heathrow has four different hold patterns, um, north, west, northeast, south, um, east, south, west, um, holding positions around um, which um, which will sometimes be, be
be used uh, quite extensively like they are at the moment I think. I heard from Jilly that there were some very uh, odd patterns going on, holding patterns. One of United 767s coming out of maintenance. Uh, probably undergone I'd imagine on wing inspection or perhaps a uh, small technical uh, hitch or uh, as they do quite a lot um, brakes, new brakes on these jets. Wow, steep climb out. Oh yeah. Oh really? September? Interesting. Charles Leclerc's um, aeroplane. Yeah, these, uh, these old 767s apparently go through brake pads like uh, butter. Um, that's what I'm hearing anyway. Yeah, heavy braking, depends on, again, weather conditions. What's that, GP? Oh, sorry. Oh, they're Welsh wings. Oh, goodness me. Yes, sorry. Okay, I need to go back there, folks, and really um, apply some apologies to you guys. Might be a little bit. I do know it, obviously, yes, but of course, uh, they are pure Welsh wings, aren't they, on the, uh, on the 380, the 350, all the, um, all, all the uh, Airbus, um, apart from the A220, I believe. Um, but... I don't know, I might be wrong actually. I might be wrong uh, checking on that one. But of course, Welsh, I'm proud of it. Welsh wings, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, those, those folks who gave me a bit of stick might have actually gone now and uh, we'll never see them again. Um, but uh, for those people who did stick around, uh, please, uh, yeah, rage quitting. We've got half of Wales is now rage quit. I do apologize. It's of course, it is, um, it's why we lost yeah, um, but yes, of course, they are Welsh uh, folks. Well, the sock is absolutely limp, Jilly. It's, it's just doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, so they'll stick to what they've got at the moment, I'd imagine. It's quite a big logistical thing, isn't it, in terms of, you know, uh, changing flight plans and all that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's closing in that. Good question, that. Good question. Somebody asking, why don't the windscreen wipers blow off when they're flying? Well. Obviously, I have to say they've obviously been manufactured uh, and, and tested in very high wind conditions, but they are, it is quite interesting that they're not all that low profile. They are, especially, I have to say, the Dreamliner. It's quite a bulky sort of um, setup, um, centralized right on the center column of the windshield. Um, but, uh, but it is quite interesting how it's not, um, it's not sort of like low profile, so to speak. You'd expect it to be. But obviously they know what they're doing. <laughs> It's 
It's a bit harsh, isn't it, Philip? <laughs> it's not the county, is it? It's in uh, it's in Broughton, which is Broughton is the is the is the it's not it's, yeah Flintshire, isn't it? Yeah, it's not it's not um, Wales, the county. <laughs> Pratt and Whitney. I'm sure I'll finish that off for him. Um. Yeah. Proudly assembled in Broughton or Broughton in um, in Wales. The country. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have a Snickers, mate. <laughs> Just sort of words you use in the school. Playground, isn't it? <laughs> Seems to be quite a lot of. Uh... Whoa! Big flash! Another big flash, man! There's a lot of uh, BA jets sitting there waiting to go into into gate. Is that due to late departing aircraft, perhaps? But that's definitely a. Um... A big uh, gaggle of 320s and 321s all sitting around there. Uh, Virgin Atlantic as well. Uh, there's a big delay of aircraft going to gate. You can see them all down there. I'm going to pull a little bit back just to, uh, just in case we catch another um, electrical discharge. It's not a, uh, it's not a twister in the middle of that, is it, Jenny? Well, it looks like it. It looks like it. Oh, is it? Um, probably going to be flying, f flying down to uh, Charles de Gaulle in um, in one of those Airbus uh, A3 A220s with Air France. It's an A330 CEO. So this all either is Turkish, is it? So I think that's CF6s. Wow, Smokus Joas going out of the sun. And look out, look at that. I'll just don't worry, I'll get that. It's absolutely wow. And that's that regular oil filter changes. More oil pressurization systems or whatever okay no these are the uh think the trent 700s every time i zoom in there's a bleeding gray big flash in there. so again not using the uh deploying the the thrust reversers but uh, not actually using them Where's that? No, it's not Supercell, mate. It's just uh, just me being excited. See the windshield wipers on the. Uh, see how um, how long the uh, the arm is before it reaches the blade. It's quite. Um, it's quite flimsy, it looks, but obviously it's a very uh, efficient motor system that uh, that powers those wipers. Oh, okay. Yeah, Trent 700s on that uh, Turkish jet. Cafe cargo. You're here later. Okay. Yeah, come by after I finish. Thanks, mate. Oh, that's old uh, matey from UPS, the 747 pilot from Anchorage. 
Yeah, he's here. He's here, yeah. He's just been very standing very patiently, mate. Do what? Oh, listen to that. Uh, no. Don't tell me. Dave. Oh, mate, look at that cell there. Chris. Steve. <laughs> um, see what I mean about the, uh, A the A220 winglet? It's still quite fence style, a bit like the old Embraer one, funny enough. But um, yeah, why they didn't put a sort of like a, 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 a more, uh, mind you, it is quite, uh, it is quite, um, yeah, you know what? To give it its due, it is, even though it is almost fence style, it's quite, you know, um, blended uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of way. Ah, oh, here we go. Um, Clive. Is it? John. Dash eight freighter. Interestingly enough, uh, Boeing. Um, Bob. No, Bob. Uh, I mean, Bo Boeing. Is it? Is it? Dan. You properly narrowed it down, though. Oh, 
just go through the alphabet, mate. Ant. Ali. Is it beyond, is it, or is it, is it beyond G? <laughs> Just help me out here, man. It is, yeah? Is it just, eh? Gzzm! H, begins with H, does it begin with H? Does it begin with G? Or I. Ian! Ian! It's Ian! It's Ian! <laughs> yes! I knew it! As soon as I... <laughs> yes! 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 Sorry, Ian, mate. Uh, our good friend Ian. Um, Stephen. There we go. Ian, Steve. There we go. Uh, UPS 747-8 captain who very patiently stood behind me waiting um, to say hello. He's here! Wow! Who, so, what, how does that work out then? Is he just here on holiday or, um... <laughs> Blimey. Don't think I ever would have got there, Jelly. It would have been about 10 o'clock by the time I got to the eyes. Gus! Yeah, but that's why I went through the alphabet, wasn't it? Yeah. Gus. John with a J-O-N. But as soon as, as soon as you said, yeah, mate, that's it, I've got it immediately. Yeah, so. so there we go. Uh, all the way from Anchorage. So um, what's he doing here then? I'll have to find out. He's, he's staying next door, I think, or up the road, one of the two. Whether he's here on holiday or whether he's here flying with UPS or he's uh, deadheading a flight to somewhere, I don't know. But um, soon find out. Well, he won't soon find out. I'll try and find out. I've got him on my phone. Kay is a new member. Welcome, Kay. Um, lovely thing to do, debash mode. Um, if you're hearing me talking about uh, gifting membership, folks, it's a wonderful thing that people, some people are privileged and able to do um, and uh, for those who maybe can't afford it or uh, or um, or just you know for whatever reason it might be um, it's a lovely thing to uh, to have our members um, have that option of gifting memberships rather than giving us money you know um, with that whole um, you know uh, super chat thing where I you know um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so, so so it's a lovely thing that we've um, that, that, that's been implemented by um, by our good friends at YouTube. And um, am I am I able to uh, derobe now, Jelly, or uh, or would you recommend I stay looking like a complete idiot? Let me just show you what I look like, Jelly. Okay. It's not too bad, is it? Poncho City. Orange. Cider Man. And if there isn't a Cider Man super superhero, I want to um, to copyright that now. Thank you. All. Mate, Ian, very patiently waiting there, man. Just, uh, I know that I, it's, 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 it's. Yeah, beautiful cell there, man. Look at that cell there. Look at it. Look at it. Isn't that beautiful? Cumulonimbus, folks, in the making. Uh, you can see the top of the cloud, which uh, pilots, um, or oh. um, uh, 
the come sometimes known as um, the anvil cloud because it forms the shape of an anvil uh, as the as the hot air or is it the cold air hot air rises and uh, creates the the um, the cloud top a bit like table mountain down in South Africa get some borrow techniques Big Mac thank you Big Mac number two start on that Virgin 787 Is it? Thank you, David. Oh, because I'm holding a bit of blue cloth just for whatever reason I'm holding it. Yeah! Nice! It's about 10, probably. Maybe a little bit more than that. Chris Larkin is a new member. Welcome, first class, uh, Chris. Chris Larkin, a uh, brand new member. Echo Six Bravo has um, gifted five Big Jet TV memberships. Thank you, Echo Six, uh, and also Big Mac, which we just mentioned. Thank you, Big Mac. Uh, Phil Boardman, nice big sell over Reading, Didcot, and Bista. Um, Terry Denya, all the flights taking off are going to be on hold. Interesting. So, uh, where's he going? In? Oh, he's going over to T4. Same here. Um, yeah, I mean, everything approaching from the west, Chile, is approaching through that cell. Uh, this is Koreans, triple seven. This could make a bit of a mess of the runway. Sorry it's taken so long to get to you. Um, hope there's been some decent sort of questions and discussions that have been going on um, whilst I've been trying to get on with this backlog of uh, whatever's going on here. Uh, Brian Stewart Finner, 350 next in. Thank you, Brian. Caroline Blair still love the Korean. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great livery, especially in conditions like these. Uh, beautiful contrasting blue. I love that. Uh, Jill Perry, good afternoon to you. John H. Uh, Patricia, absolutely. That is one hell of a cell that's um, still sort of like. Let me have a look at my my weather radar and see. Um, <clears throat> see what that the direction yeah sort of like I can see it now yeah 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 it's a pretty hefty one doesn't look like there's going to be anything else that's going to be mind you thought that earlier on didn't we and uh, and it absolutely um, came down heavy wind socks still doing absolutely nothing at the moment no wind whatsoever. Oh, nice start up on that triple.
Yeah, we're hoping that they may revert to uh, 27 operations, folks. Uh, certainly the wind uh, forecasted this afternoon was all um, westerlies. But... Um, so we've got a place right now. Rakesh Haridas. Good day to you, Rakesh. A brand new sparkling new member. Uh, returning member, should I say, Rakesh. Um, Rishikesh, actually. Uh, Rishikesh, my apologies, Rishi. Uh, Sandra, all gifted a Big Jet TV membership. membership. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, what's flying there? Um, what's flying there, Aviation in 4K? What's flying there? Do we know? Ray Rowson, um, in terms of um, which which um, airfield I would uh, favour, uh, sorry, which um, uh, hotel I would favour, to be perfectly honest with you, it really does all depend on operations, whether it's Courtyard, um, the Renaissance, or even uh, Hilton Garden Inn met somebody at Hilton Garden in a couple of weeks ago who, who was staying there for a week and was uh, absolutely fascinated um, because the great thing with Hilton Garden is it doesn't matter which what what directions the operations are in you're always going to get um, a lot of action um, of course here at the courtyard you're able to stand out on the uh, on the balcony like we are now uh, I think it's open now although saying that the bar's not open in there but I don't think it opens till about six o'clock but you can't just rock up here as uh, any old Tom, Dick or Harry, even if your name is Tom, Dick or Harry, um, uh, because uh, you have to be a resident. Of course, if you are a resident, when I say a resident, I'm talking about somebody who is staying at the hotel. Um, whether your name is Tom, Dick or Harry, of course, you will be available, able to come up here um, to, uh, to witness these great views. Um, you could also um, come up to the restaurant which is behind me here the other bar which is around the corner um, it's kind of out of shot at the moment but um, that's a great place to visit as well grab a few drinks um, obviously drink responsibly and uh, get public transport as and when you can without driving your automobile um, and um, and grab a meal up here as well uh, make a make a plan of it really to be honest with you uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like that, then maybe arrange it for um, coming down here on a on a Friday, uh, staying overnight, get a bit of plane spit, spot plane spitting, plane spotting in on um, on the Saturday, uh, Friday night, of course, out on the balcony. Always good to watch the aircraft, uh, the airport in um, in the dark during night operations. Always great. switch from that to that because uh, we don't no longer need this fast taxi from the thin edge here. it's probably massively delayed going in again isn't it Chris Ward is a new member welcome Chris David Foy, 787D Dreamline from Dublin of all places, number two in the approach now. David Foy saying, uh, Dreamliner from Dublin. Now, what's going on there? That's interesting. Is that it? Um, wait a minute, let me just catch this banking shot, which is quite nice. It will be a 320, I think. Might get a bit of a funky shot here. Stand by. Stand by for funky shot in three, two, one. Yeah! Okay, so this uh, Dreamliner in from Dublin, we're hearing, folks. I think this is the one. Just popped down a stance and I saw Emirates drop seven in and out, and they've got a surprise with Saudi Arabian C-17, a uh, given go duck. Yes, uh, we believe there's a... Is it a C-17 here at London Heathrow, is it? Parked up over the other side, probably at the uh, private terminal, or on the, uh, the south stands, anyway. So this one in from Dublin, is it? Interesting. What's this come? It 
hasn't had a um oh oh it's paint it must be paint i'd imagine wow look at that this big old lump going in. Oh, okay. Interesting. Who said that, Jilly? Sean Flynn. Thank you, Sean. Great bit of feedback there. Uh, apparently this aircraft in Dublin for f wing painting. So therefore, uh, that's quite interesting. So it's, in other words, it's taken five days. Is that right? Five, da five days ago, this aircraft flew to Dublin and uh, she's back going to Islamabad tonight. So that's five days out of service for that jet. Um, just for wing painting oh big spark of lightning over there in the distance still going on i need to change this still man sorry folks still uh, struggling a little bit with the well that was a big flash of lightning out out west iberia's 350 Seems to be a sort of like a. Uh, you see that haze there in the in the distance there. Almost looks like like when you see um, fire, forest fire, fire, uh, forest fires. Um, but obviously it's not. But you know, is that sort of like? Is it definitely that haze there in the distance? Right, okay. I'm I'm removing the poncho as we speak. Take the app. Take the app off first. Take the app off. There's a good. One. Hot show removed, sir. Thank you, sir. Brought you all, sir. Same. Okay. okay. Nice high climbing uh, Airbus A330 CEO of Virgin Atlantic. Still, um, these aircraft going to be in uh, in service long enough for them to start receiving new paint work. One of which uh, had it done recently. Quite interesting. Um, Jilly just mentioning to me uh, once again uh, more people asking what camera do you use, which is quite interesting. Jilly, have you got a um, have you got a banner or anything like that? You can hunt through the archives and see if we've got an old banner that we did with um, with Panasonic. Okay, well, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Okay, well, I'll let, you, I'll, I'll let you find that. Let me know when you've done it, yeah? Because uh, it is a fantastic, a wonderful little camera. Um, one which is, hello, wait a minute, what's that? That's uh, military, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> me flipping old eyes. Me eyes are old, me knees are bent. My nose is old and drizzled. Um, yeah, interesting that the um, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, the paint on the wings, I won't mention the airline that I flew with last year, uh, that was um, 
incredibly patchy. Blimey, that Finnair 350 has been going all over the place. Where's he going? In? Um, incredibly patchy. Um, and uh, you could actually see the bare carbon through the wing, through the paint where it peeled off. Um, nothing to be worried about, of course, but obviously it's the ultraviolet. Um, this paint has to be um, um, UV proof, so to speak. Um, because obviously the high and low temperatures that these aircraft go through is, is very interesting, like upwards of 40 degrees if they're sitting on the ground, minus 75 or something crazy like that if they're at um, uh, 40,000 feet. It is just uh, the, 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 the differential in temperature that the outside of this aircraft has to go through. It's a testament. Uh, to, to the wing of uh, the paint manufacturers alone but obviously you know over time now that the uh, 787 has been in service for so long that the wing paint uh, either they had a dodgy batch literally I mean it's possible don't get me wrong um, either they had a dodgy batch or uh, they're sort of like reaching that point in their history the service history of, of the aircraft that it's uh, they're now finding out that uh, that paint isn't lasting as long as what they had predicted and as a result they're having to repaint a lot of these wings uh, on the 787 uh, given go dog saw a clip the other day where a new 330 neo was parked next to a 330 co brilliant demonstrations demonstration of the new blended wing tip uh, compared to effectively bot on one okay um, well we've had that a couple of times I don't know if that's, that was clip that that was a clip from us um, here on the show but uh, we have had um, quite a few um, instances where we've uh, seen the um, a330 CEO part next to the neo and you're able to quite clearly see the differences between the two. The major thing to, to see, I mean, obviously the fuselage hasn't changed at all, but the major thing that they've changed is the wing and, uh, more importantly, the engine and the winglet are the two most dis, uh, identifiable features uh, on, the ne uh, on the NEO versus the CEO. Um, of course, the, ne the CEO has the old fence-style wingtip, which is the almost like the 747-esque uh, type wing tip whereas the um, the the new Neo has a uh, uniquely designed modified wing tip carbon carbon a uh, carbon 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 fiber sorry what's that you Oh, yes, 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 yes. What is it? What is it? Okay, folks, talking of the, the, the Neo, we've got a Neo jet going out now. Now, Julie, where did, did you send me the email? So I can read it. Okay, uh, quickly, quickly. Come on, family member on flight today. Um, this is Dave. This is Dave Eastwood. Um, eldest son Jordan due out Heathrow on a Delta 330 it's a code share with Virgin Atlantic um, I'll read out his message and here it is now
Oh, have a great flight, Jordan. Wow, look at that big old thing. You don't want to fly into that, man. I'm telling you, I'll tear your wings off. Like it or lump it, you ain't going anywhere near that. Um, yeah, uh, Jordan, um, happy flying. Uh, off there um, with the armed forces to train with the, the Americans. And a uh, big shout out to you, mate. Thank you for everything you do. Um, all your colleagues as well. Um, off there to the United States for training in the armed forces. Um, all the very best to you. And um, hopefully see you back here in the UK uh, in the near future. Uh, have we, uh, well, we still are awaiting our, um, our uh, Virgin Atlantic um, crew member on her first international. Oh, she's gone. Oh. Oh. Really? Oh my goodness me, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be approached by the official media teams and people like that. It's not, uh, we've had so many instances where, 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 where understandably, People get very excited about, you know, um, uh, having a um, having a, a, a chat with somebody who maybe uh, knows somebody in the media team, or uh, you know, really. Oh, beautiful! Look at this. shots going on here. Even another one there, look. Gotta say. It's uh, getting on for my favourite 777 livery right now. Lovely retro style. Now watch this for a um, total funkadelic shot coming up right now folks size of it that's a big aeroplane but I tell you what that's a bigger bleeding cloud isn't it it's like an explosion Stephen Luscom, Brian Stewart, LA Girl. Okay, what do you think the big cell weighs? Hey, you know what, folks? That's another incredible 
factoid. Uh, look up average weight of a cloud. Um, billions and billions and billions and trillions of tons of water are um, oh. Oh, you found it, have you? Okay, folks. A um, few people asking earlier about um, about the, the camera. In fact, to be honest with you, it's one of the most popular questions that's asked during our shows: is um, what camera do you use? Uh, Panasonic VX1. Always used it. Been through all of the different options in terms of cameras, folks. Um, many of the high-end sort of like okay um, so the um, so the cameras not expensive folks we've tried all the big heavy expensive ones you know with the SDI connections and all funky this and funky that okay we're coming out again um, and to be honest with you we've tried them all and there is nothing like the VX1 um, we were even given a, a camera to try by a, another manufacturer wanting us to try uh, one of their sort of like next step up cameras, more professional, so to speak. Well, to be honest with you, um, I, didn't, I didn't find it uh, helpful at all having a bigger camera. Um, this thing has got amazing capabilities in terms of its, uh, its range and um, wouldn't want anything else and have we got the banner there Jilly did you say Are you running the banner now okay so it's the Panasonic VX1 if anybody's wondering just head to their website and um, and then you see he's avoiding that cell like the plague um, so here we go again Oh, no, that's now turned to uh, orange, I think. Is that crisis once again being averted? Did they, or are they just doing exercises, perhaps? I don't know. Oh, start up. Oh, I just best zoom on the VX1. Yeah, but you know what is the great thing? Is that the big expensive cameras um, you have to go through a number of different uh, physical settings on the camera in order to get the zoom that you want. Um, and there's a lot of flicking and flickering around um, before, whereas this one goes straight through the manual through to digital um, or uh, analog through to digital display um, zoom. And it is, um, it is just fantastic in what it, it can do. Uh, lots of people who are who are regular on Big Jet TV will know exactly what I'm talking about in terms of its um, its zoom capability. Start up number two. Finally, rebook 747 upstairs. Frankfurt to Buenos Aires, returning 747 from Sao Paulo. Wow, Tom Attack.
Is that someone who was on the plane, Jilly? Yeah. Yeah. Did we catch it on the stream or? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome f bit of feedback, that is, Jilly, isn't it? Was that on, is that on members' chat? Is that on chat? Oh, it's a tweet? If you missed it earlier on, folks, it all literally, from the start, it literally went off. Um, weren't expecting it, to be honest with you. Well, actually, sorry, yes, we were. But then the forecast, um, it, it's, it, it, it went, you know, the, the actual forecast went um, in terms of the uh, stormy weather. They're chucking them out now. Some poor people have been sitting down there being told two hour delays, folks. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me, mate. And they're only going on an hour flight or something like that, is it? Oh my goodness me, only going to France. Could have actually said one time in the history of the world that the train might have got there quicker. Cumula Nimbai uh, is actually um, it's actually getting closer, isn't it? <laughs> I have to keep an eye on that. I think it's actually, uh, yeah, that's um, Atomic Bibliarbus, almost uh, kind of. Um, Crazy, crazy, uh, all the um, Italian, uh, sorry Italian, um, uh, Greek or uh, Latin names for uh, cumula nimbi, cumulus as in accumulating um, whatever, uh, and uh, nimbus for, what's nimbus in uh, Latin then? Tell me, here we go. Great funky shot coming up. Here we go. Beautiful, mate. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, look to the right. Uh, you'll see a dirty, great big cloud. Um, weighing in at 58 billion tons. Uh, it is incredible, folks. Um, when you look at even the smallest cloud, something like that little dittle one up there, um, millions of tons of water, folks, uh, to to create that plumage um, and that thing there is um, is definitely if you look closely if we ran that now uh, on that cloud for uh, any significant amount of time and then fast forwarded it you would actually see it um, expanding um, at a crazy rate but obviously we're not going to be sitting here doing that for a <laughs>
Okay, so Jilly's telling me that uh, apparently, um, yeah. By the way, uh, did, did, did you? T is that VX1 banner still up there, Jilly? Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, folks. Um, really, I mean, for anything under under five hundred, if you've got a budget, then um, you know. And listen, uh, in terms of somebody um, uh, uh, um, giving the, the the ultimate feedback. For, uh, for, 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 for an electronic device that's used extensively. Um, think of the toggle switch on this, folks, and how much it gets used. You know, you'd have to be going on holiday twice a week uh, for a whole four years um, to get anything near of what I'm, what, I'm, um, what I'm doing on this camera because it, gets, it goes through a hell of a lot. It's, I've obviously got it covered up. And also, don't forget that I'm using the uh, micro HDMI output on the camera as well not um it's still pretty damn dark over there man um so that's another point that uh, needs to be raised in terms of its uh, uh longevity and um and reliability is that that hdmi input socket uh obviously i'm not taking like in the old days where i used to take it out put it back in take it out put it back in uh, i'm keeping it mounted and anchored is that a 7.5? 7.6. Nice. So we've got to find out what Ian's uh, doing here, haven't we? So we're waiting for VS. What, what is it, Jilly? VS? VS153 to JFK. Uh, apparently it's on radar, but uh, we're waiting for it um, to ping up. On board that aircraft as a crew member, a new a sprog, as they are sometimes known back in the day, uh, more more aimed at pilots and people like that, a sprog, um, a youngster, a rookie, whatever. Uh, she's on her first flight with Virgin Atlantic, obviously having gone through all of her... Um, crew training and so on and so forth emergency procedures and things like that which is pretty cool to do good fun but very educational as well they have to go into the swimming pool um, and um, uh, do their life-saving techniques uh, staying afloat all that uh, they have uh, mock-ups of the aircraft there for going down the emergency slides for um, for, uh, for landing on water and all that kind of thing which is pretty cool so they, um, they go through the whole mock-up procedure and have to obviously pass that training um, with flying colours. Uh, forgive the pun. So watch the leading edge slats on the wings, folks, as these uh, pilots now have their uh, full taxiing instructions, which I have to say is quite interesting that they're going this way around and not up the top. Leading edge slat right hand side of that engine you see the right hand side of the engine you can also see the flaps there on the back of the wing uh, what they're going to do is um, bring those flaps and slats back to the neutral position um, whilst they're taxiing they may be currently sort of like concentrating more on the uh, the taxi directions than they are on uh, retracting the, um, the flaps and slats. But once they are uh, happy in their surroundings, then they'll start to reconfigure the aircraft. APU will have been fired up by now, I'd imagine. See the uh, reinforced area around where the uh, the cargo door is, the floor of the door. Flaps are now completely up. Slats have not yet been um, retracted. In fact, there they go. They're going up now. There we are. Very quick procedure. Um, electrically operated, I believe. 
um, certainly on the 747 it's that sort of like um, very familiar noise when a uh, isn't it a lovely jet as a freighter isn't it it's a 200 all of the uh, freighters are 200 with the um, retro fitted What's that, Jilly? Yeah? That's a great thing, Mark B. Uh, thank you for that. Very interesting factoid. The top of that cloud is around about, or, or can reach in excess of 65,000 feet. Um, so as you can see, you don't want to be really, uh, obviously that cloud is just billowing winds out the top of it some very very high winds going on in there but um but amazing factoid thank you mark b for that uh topping in at around about 65 thousand feet hello missed that one gp missed that one was that uh just on the runway late was that uh avianca still on the runway not gonna be happy with that They're probably already massively delayed aren't they Oh, what for departure? Troposphere, Stephen Luscombe. Yeah, what's the outer sort of like the coffin layer uh, that the um, that some of the um, high um, altitude jets fly at? What is it? The the B1, isn't it? That flies at um, into the coffin layer, and the coffin layer is very very thin. Uh, too high, and you're in trouble. Too low, and you whatever it might be. But um, you have to stay within that that layer because I think it can um, be very very dangerous indeed if you uh, if you fly outside of it or whatever it might be uh, Zdenko Maydar Zdenko good day to you my friend a very warm welcome to Big Jet TV as a brand new member um, if you're a new member, please make sure, uh, don't feel, oh, hello. different airlines and stuff isn't it it's different yeah yeah doesn't it add me automatically Jilly Are we able to wind it back to, 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 to figure out how many we've missed out on? Because if we can speak to them, they might be able to sort of like reinstate it or something like that. I don't know. Right. Not many. Probably once. Right. 
It looks like he's flying straight into it, but I can assure you he or she is not. They're going to make a, uh, a divert left around that cloud. I would imagine the size of that cloud, mate. Yeah. BA got the doors of those hangars, that hangar up open both sides so they can get a bit of cool air running through it. Um, is he uh, is he in the holding pattern, that guy? Looks like they are. Is that an American jet? Oh, Jordan's folks thanking us for um, reaching out and uh, catching his departure. All the very best to you, Jordan, flying out to the US, training with the United States Air Force, Armed Forces, gladly, gladly uh, serving. Jobson. Good day to you, Mike, a returning member here on Big Jet TV. Martin Smith cruises at 690 kilometres an hour. Um, now, Michael McEwen, little ATR. We were talking about ATR earlier on. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Going to be um, probably um, looking quite closely at their hybrid fuel cell systems that they're going to be running um, on future short, very short haul, um, domestic. Okay, this is uh, another DHL jet. Let's just grab that trip. Funky, funky, funky shot. Jamie Caldwell. Ian Caldwell asking for a shout out for his son, Jamie, A350, BA350. Don't know if he's flying it or on it or what. He's BA crew, there we go. Yeah, but 1,500 lightning strikes, or is that 1,500 uh, electrical um, impulses from uh, electrical activity within clouds, not so much lightning strikes? Um, because, because lightning, this, you know, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Because uh, obviously, uh, you know, lightning um, uh, uh, is also, you have sheet lightning, which is um, within the cloud itself it just goes off as a big boom you see it um, a fascinating thing to watch when you're flying above um, a cloud system that's uh, that's got huge lightning uh, activity or uh, electrical activity a uh, fascinating thing to watch i was very lucky when i was a young lad to fly with my dad and the amount of times that we flew around a big system at night and all you saw uh, from inside that cloud was just boom 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 boom, boom just big electrical light almost like a glow light you know but uh, look, almost like there's a bleeding war going on inside the cloud uh, yes got you GP 
Okay, this is our 350 going out now. Julian, Julian on board as a crew member. Jamie, sorry. My apologies, Jamie. I must say, um, flew with EasyJet down to Spain, down to Malaga, uh, for my for my golfing trip, um, which uh, was a complete failure, to be perfectly honest with you, in terms of my golf. Um, but um, EasyJet, fantastic service, very well presented. Um, you know, um, the, the the cabin crew very well presented. Um, so um, I must say, I'm very, very impressed by that. Um, flew out of Gatwick with easy, easy, son, easy. Still no activity from the windsock at this stage. So that's a CF um, six powered jet. The one we saw earlier on landing was uh, I think uh, Trent's 700 powered, so they've obviously got um, different um, engine suppliers on their A330s. Out oh. attitude there on that 330 look. in the climb. Straight towards that cumulative nimba. Uh, don't forget our uh, well, makes you on. Just literally as I said that, actually, the wind picking up now um, from the west. A little bit of um, happiness from the sock. We need the winds to change. Funk here, shot in. Three, two, one! Yeah. Nice. I can feel that wind on my back now. Need it to intensify enough for them to change operations uh, to uh, departures. In which case we'll have them lined up here, folks, right in front of us. It's all nice and clean down there. Ready? Dr. Smith. Uh, flying to Sardinia recently. It's fortunate to us. Pilot's glory. Shadow of your plane framed with the circular ray, but yes. I have witnessed that quite a few times. It's a halo. I, th I think you call it a halo, don't you? Um, where um, halo, uh, where you um, where you see the, uh, the, the 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 shadow of the aircraft um, with a with a halo around it on the on the clouds below you, uh, based on the sun's reflections and. Uh, 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 ice build up and all those kind of things that go on the phenomenon of, of weather it is a beautiful thing uh, now that uh, cumula nimbi has uh, almost disappeared 
Uh, Vamos, Turkish F 330s powered by both Trent 700s and CF6. Yes, indeed. Uh, as I was just mentioning there, the um, we caught, uh, in fact, that's it there, isn't it? That's the uh, Trent powered uh, Turkish 330. Another thing I really want to see. Oh, big funky shot. This is going to be cool. Oh, maybe a bit high. Is he a bit high? Yeah. You can see the specialist wing paint uh, over on the wing of these uh, of these jets. Um, it's never sort of like any anything other than the um, the appropriate paint for uh, for deflecting any sort of like you know uh, heat and cold uh, incredible when you think of the differences in temperatures you know uh, in terms of a something expanding and contracting um, you know from cold to hot um, it's very very highly advanced uh, technology that goes into into manufacturing these paints Mitch 326 indeed uh, wake turbulence is the uh, uh, the worst thing that uh, one thing of the worst things that uh, a light aircraft can experience looks like that uh, experience big GE 90s on that Qatar jet hear them whirring away uh, one of the um, one operator that's not shutting his engine down one of his engine uh, doesn't need to taxi on two engines of course that's something that's adopted by many airlines where they shut down one of the engines to reduce um, fuel usage and um, uh, reduce their footprint because you think of that one engine in terms of the fuel savings from uh, the point when it's off the runway to its gate, um, depending on the uh, the airfield that it's operating in, uh, can amount to a significant amount of savings um, over the space of a year. Uh, VS one five three taxiing to runway. We're hearing. Thank you uh, for. That yeah, Imi, thank you, Imi. Um, is that something starting up? Okay. Is that just a, uh, a vehicle? You're not from around these parts, are you, boy? I think that's the American Triple Seven. I saw uh, this uh, spot right there. Trent 700s. Oh, Trent 800s, sorry. Shredder head triple seven. Rab H taking off and landing into the wind is very much prefer yes, always a, a preference for um, for pilots to be uh, um, uh, approaching in a headwind, and obviously the reasons for that is you don't want to be pushed because your aircraft is trying to maintain a, uh, um, a, a controlled airspeed on the descent uh, so if you've got winds pushing you from behind then um, it's not uh, it's not favorable but also the aircraft works at its best with a headwind they uh, uh, invariably they don't test aircraft in wind tunnels with the um, with the wind behind although they probably do have some kind of a little uh, I don't know 
Oh, it's that little uh, Uzbekistan jet, isn't it? Nice. Right, Jilly. Um, VS jet. We've got an update on that. Okay, so this is um, the next uh, um, family member on Big Jet TV that's um, requested um, that we catch their daughter, son. No? Oh, okay, no, no, this is completely wrong. I was completely wrong there. This is her best friend who she used to fly with at... Tui and Jet 2. Um, her name and her name is Katie and she's flying now with Virgin and this is her first um, flight with Virgin Atlantic having just completed all her uh, her checks and uh, all that kind of thing so uh, hopefully um, they'll have a nice calm um, cabin crew manager there with them because obviously it's always very daunting even though they've trained on the aircraft so they know where you know if somebody wants a bottle of water for example where all those things are located in the galleys and uh, emergency procedures obviously when they do the um, uh, the cabin announcement at the beginning of the flight holding up the seat belt this is how you undo your seat belt this is how you take it off although everyone sitting down has already done their seat belt up and probably taking it off as well uh, but anyways uh, you know it's just one of those standard procedures a uh, bit of a waste of time but um anyway uh you see loads of people with their headphones on and all that kind of thing not playing the blindest bit of uh, interest in it but it's always good if you're not gonna listen to the cabin safety announcements then at least f make sure that when you get on the aircraft you look at where the emergency exits are uh, make a make a uh, i mean they're all or more or less all in this in the in the normally um you know in the front in the back and over the wing um but um depends on the size of the aircraft that you're flying on of course um but uh, yeah it's always it's always nice to give the cabin crew a little bit of respect in terms of Julie, just double check it because i've got this 380 touching down now and i want to make sure I... okay we're good are we okay so yeah, especially on a big jet like this, it depends on whether you're standing, whether you're sitting on the bottom deck or the top deck. Um, just be fully aware of where all the uh, the emergency exits are located. Um, obviously, the uh, oxygen and all that kind of stuff is uh, pretty standard procedure across all um, all aircraft these days. So if you've seen it once, you've kind of seen it before. But if you're not familiar with it, just listen to them and watch them. Give them a little bit of a smile as well when they're done. Thank you. They'll appreciate that. So they do work hard. turbulence from the super heavy in front of you uh, giving an announcement to the trailing aircraft behind this big jet might be seeing these uh, slats and flaps being um, retracted quite soon because these uh, Emirates crews are very familiar with their surroundings here at London Heathrow big set of flaps on a look
Pardon me. Okay, VS153 about to go. Katie, we wish you all the best. She'll be sitting strapped in now. Don't know what, uh, what, um, mind that, what, um, part of the aircraft she's, uh, she's working with, whether it's up front in business or, uh, she's rolling, did you say, GP? She's rolling. Here we go. Now this could be quite long. I reckon she's going to come out around about here. Uh, Dreamliners are always um, quite long on their departure. Always remember Captain Zane Dunning explaining the reasons why they have such a long run out on the Dreamliner. Um, her friend Julie, Amy, Emmy, Emmy. A big shout out to Emmy as well, who uh, who put that request across to us. Thank you, Emmy, and um, wishing Katie all the best in her career with Virgin Atlantic. I know she'll enjoy it. Um, I haven't spoken to anyone who hasn't enjoyed their experience with Virgin Atlantic. Of uh, course, great destinations as well. So that uh, always shakes it up a bit, doesn't it? Being on long haul destinations with uh, with, uh, with an international carrier like uh, Virgin Atlantic, guaranteeing every flight that you do is going to be a um, is going to be a long haul. the big roo being pushed to go, I think. Mikoto took on ramp voluntarily because I was curious. Got bored between flights or during delays and it can be a bit uh, thick sometimes. Well, there we go. Um, Mikoto, fantastic. Uh, working, I think, at Bristol, isn't it? Um, which is a nice way to ease yourself into something that's not massively heavy in terms of uh, uh, aircraft. But really, to be honest with you, at the end of the day, whether it's a, a hundred A three twenties or a mix of triple sevens and three eighties and seven eight sevens, it's just a, a wonderment. Uh, it's even more of an amazement, isn't it, when you're uh, when you're able to see all these big aeroplanes up close. Taylor, anyone ever been in the Concorde room? 
Um, where is that? Uh, Aidan Campbell, Virgin Premium Economy is great. And I can vouch for that as well. It's blooming great. Um, Vamos, why do they have a long way out on the Dreamliner? Are the Trent 1000 or Gen X is underpowered? No, Vamos. Uh, they're actually um, uh, derated. Um, and the reason why they have such a long run out is because the engines are so intelligent. The aircraft itself is so intelligent. This is one of their one, uh, one of their uh, seven eight seven tens with British Airways. Such an uh, intelligent system that the aircraft uh, will use the maximum amount of runway that it can um, in order to get the aircraft airborne. So therefore, uh, minimising the amount of um, uh, uh, stress that you put on the uh, on the engine itself. You know, um, if you want to get up a hill, um, you generally push the accelerator down quite hard, don't you? Well, that can put the engine under a lot of stress and therefore mean that you'll have to service it uh, earlier than what you had anticipated. But uh, with these engines, um, they're so intelligent that they will um, they will only use this the the, the, the the they will use the minimum amount of, of power and um, and the maximum amount of runway. In order to um, in order to uh, 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 maximise the life of the engine and its uh, and its componentry, that's the Neo. See the winglet? It's that beautiful carbon winglet on the Neo. Crazy looking thing, isn't it? Sculpted, hand built, and of course. Uh, the winglet is part that the these wings assembled in Wales, um, made in Wales, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, but the winglet and the engines are all attached uh, to the aircraft when it arrives, uh, <coughs> when all those components come together. Uh, come together right now. Oh, do, do, boom, do. have actually um, spoken with uh, uh, once with a couple of uh, 747-8 freighter uh, pilots uh, who almost wince at the uh, length of runway the 747-8 uses sometimes um, because the engines are obviously so intelligent and we're talking about yes indeed Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 and the Gen X engine which are almost identical engines uh, to, to, to view, um, but uh, obviously they have uh, internally um, different uh, componentry and materials that are used for different particular components. A very modern engine, the core of the engine uh, using well, certainly in the Rolls-Royce engine, uh, were grown components. Um, ceramic components which, uh, and, and other components that, which are literally grown um, to make them ultra strong. strong. Um, but the irony is that those were the particular components which caused the uh, Trent 1000 issues uh, with cracking albeit microscopic cracking never actually had a physical problem with the Trent 1000 engine in terms of like a blade off or anything like that you know within the uh, within the internals of the engine because obviously if you have a um, uh, one of the fan blades uh, disconnects or or um, fails um, that's kind of That's big coming out. Blimey.
So just to remind you folks, next week, uh, the midweek show will be coming from New York with um, from JFK International. Um, super class, first class of super class members, as always. One week after the show, uh, we will be um, distributing that out to our premium members as well. So um, if you're a premium member, you will get to watch it, although first class of super class members can watch it live with me and uh, I'll be on the um, I'll be on that um, what was the name of it again let me have a quick look and see where it was uh, was it Cutters Park it's a Neo and E Hall Bayswater Park, right. Anyway, there's a jetty that goes out, folks. Um, and it's a great place to uh, to film from. So how low that Dreamliner is there, man. Crazy. I'll tell you what we'll do, um, next one that goes out. Looks like a freighter, doesn't it, with that front door. Um, so, yeah, we might try, we could try a few different locations, couldn't we, uh, this time around. Have a little drive around, see if we can do any, uh, see what it's like for mobile, Jilly, as in, um, you know, our um, people like to uh, join us when, we're, when I'm driving from location to location. It's quite good fun. Mott's point that that brings back a uh, memory Luke Griffin has gifted a membership bit a big jet TV membership Luke that's very kind of you my friend and Bobby is a returning member um, complete with a gold star welcome back Bobby uh, Daniel Harris that's triple seven I think or was it seven eight seven off to Cincinnati Andreas Krugel got my red star. There we go. See if we can catch the um, next triple seven that goes out. Watch the undercarriage tilt mechanism in hot operation. It's quite a quite a cool thing to see. Seven eight seven also uh, has that as well, the um, the tilt mechanism. Oh, okay, Clark's Park, Los Angeles. Yeah. West Point um, is where I'm going to be uh, filming from. That's one of the locations anyway. Probably not going to do the TWA Hotel, folks. I probably, I might go in there and see if there's anyone in there. But you, you know what? It's, it's kind of limited um, at, that, at, at that location as to what you can see. Uh, the visual um, sights that you get. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a uh, that's a freighter turnaround, isn't it? That's right up the other end of the field, isn't it? I think. Look at that for a wingtip, folks! Isn't that beautiful, man? Baked in an oven. We 
we've got Bobby. And there's somebody else, uh, GN Man. Good day to GN Man. Gifting a big Jet TV membership. Membership, thank you, GN Man. Very nice thing to do. Royal Brunei, isn't it? Yeah. Well, again, Julie, if I'm getting there, what, what, what time am I getting there on? On Tuesday. Oh, OK. Well, that's worth a trip down there, then, and just see if we can... Interesting to note that the engines on those Pratt & Whitney's are, a, are a, a, a something that takes a, quite a long time to actually start. Um, because they have to wind the engines for quite some time before they inject the fuel um, for um, quite what reason it might be. Big American triple, watch the tilt. Missed it. It's quite early on in the in the um, in the procedure, in the uh, gear up procedure. Positive ring, gear up. Simmons get some lady birds for my bye bye. Does anyone have recent experience of Canadian and premium economy? There it is. What's that? Well, if they've got a red star, surely they've been there before with this in, in um, New York. Okay, okay. Oh. Dead Butler. Big Trades TV. Stephen Lusk and Greedy had the most amazing views of Manhattan when we landed at JFK's last December. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a crazy approach pattern. Um, depending on the runways that, they're, that, that are in use, you know, in terms of the wind directions. Um, but it's a very funky, sort of like sharp right turn into one of the uh, approach runways. Seven like that, and the little ace uh, and a little A220. Chester drawers. Flew out to San Fran on a 7879 and then back from Las Vegas on a 350 1000. The Airbus just tipped it for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, Chester Joys, that you say that because I flew on the A359 with um, uh, Etihad and then flew on the A350, uh, 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 sorry, the, the 787-900, uh, 787-9 I flew on with Etihad and then I flew the A350-1000. But the comparison, because of the, the fact that it's stretched and it's longer, there's more room inside there. So if you're going to compare the two, you need to compare like for like 350 
what 900 versus the eight, uh, the 7879 um, because I did notice a significant amount of extra space especially in the midsection of the aircraft you know where the center uh, toilets are um, and that waiting area around there is very cramped with the 787 it, it all do, does of course depend on the operator in terms of uh, oh is he was he oh it must be short staffed mate is he uh, what's he doing has he dropped his wallet or is he is he is he helping with that one is he is he going to drive that one fair play he's a fit lad isn't he eh? that's a uh, that's a fair old good lad wow mate Now, he wouldn't have been able to do that if it was flipping 35 degrees like it was earlier on. Don't tell me he's brought that up there, stopped it there, run up, run in, got into the other one, backed that one up and left it there, and then he's putting that one... No, surely not. There would have to be someone um, like super <laughs> Nick Woodward got the storm in the Midlands now. Bleeding bloke deserves a medal is what I say. If it is. Wow. So a day of preparation tomorrow, and then we're off to New York. Um, all the fisher, the fisher people around there, isn't it? All the fisher people. Now, let's see what happens here if he comes running out there. You know what that is? See that there, folks? You know what that is under tarpaulin? Anybody care to guess what that is? I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Anyone want to guess? No, no. No, no. Yes. Oh, actually, hold on a minute. Uh, maybe it is, yeah, 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 maybe it is. I thought it was an engine nacelle on its side, but obviously it's not. It is an engine, sorry, that's that's the hot liquid illusion. No, you're correct, Julie. I think, I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, but normally it's, the engines have a... I, 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 I don't really know. Thai triple seven. Are they okay? <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. You see, that's on its side. The croissant is on its side. So uh, obviously not a croissant, but uh, it is something on its side. It could quite easily be an engine nacelle. Oh, looks angry there, that triple seven there, look, you see. But that, turn that frown into a smile, come on. Okay, there it is, it's a bit better. Oh, yes, here we are. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's still a little bit, oh, there it is, now he's happy. There we are. 
He's got a bit of dribble coming out the side of the corner of his mouth, isn't it? It's not got Capra's written on it. I don't know, you know. I know why you're thinking that, sir, because it's got a it's it's almost like a it's almost like the big end is this end and the and the thin end's the other end. You know that the engine nacelle is angled like that. It has that kind of angle about it. Oh, this is big. It's Tripoli. Oh no, oh, this is 380, is it? Arthur Winglet went out earlier, didn't it? Arthur Winglet got out just before all the debacle, didn't he? Wow, look how low that thing is, man. I think that's going to be one of them low ones that, uh, that heads out over the office, Jilly. Big right bank. Sounds stick with it. Oh, is his mate giving him a lift now, is he? He has an oh look! Hey! He's giving him a lift. He did leave that there flipping it. Excuse me, sir, but is it your uh, aeroplane? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just I had to quickly go in and get the newspaper. Um I'm like, well sir, I'm afraid, you know, don't let's not uh, Let's not make an habit of that, please, uh, leaving your aeroplane there. Wow. Yeah. Fella's going to sleep well tonight, isn't he? Mrs H. Virgin Atlantic employee of the month. Definitely. Oh, there was someone on the aircraft as well. There was a, uh, there is a, a supervisor on the aircraft. There we go. Holy shit. YAA saying that uh, Birmingham's in the same uh, the same boat as uh, as we were in an hour or two ago. I don't know how long ago it was. This is Oman Air's 787 Dreamliner laying down some thrust reverses. That was uh, we. If you if you missed it earlier on, folks, we got some incredible um, wet footage of um, of these aircraft uh, when they were um, applying reverse thruster when the runway was completely immersed in water, and it was great. Kind of had it all today, really. Um, 
little bit of uh, arrivals on the southern runway with multiple go arounds some departures out of the uh, northern runway when they were on 27 operations now the uh, the wind is really uh, sort of like you know it's justifying um, um, Westerly operations as opposed to these uh, these easterly operations, but uh, it is what it is. Um, and uh, just looking, big old set of GEs on it. Famous GE ninety one one five Bs, one hundred and fifteen thousand pounds of thrust. Available, that is. Um, heavily derated a lot of these jets, uh, the engine power, because they don't need to be, so as to extend the, uh, the life of the engine. I believe, um, hearing from a very reliable source, that um, the, um, the 777X GE10, GE, uh, G well, basically the GE, 9x isn't it i think engine has been uh, rated below the uh, 115b even below the 90 000 pounds of thrust uh, which goes to show how good an aircraft the boeing 777x is in terms of its flight capabilities and uh, the fact that it doesn't really need those humongous great big engines but i think to be honest just from a scaling point of view <laughs> Uh, I think the um, 115Bs would look quite measly on the uh, on the 777X. Yeah, lots of people reporting in of uh, from um, from wherever they are in the country that um, they're uh, experiencing the same sort of conditions or have experienced the same sort of conditions that we did earlier on. Got some great atmospheric shots from here at old Londonian Hotel. See how low that jet is, man. Crazy. What, 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 what? Simon Dinsmore had the storm still 26 and muggy. See the, um... Oh, oh blimey, yeah. When's that? Wednesday? Oh, it won't be here. Yeah. I hear growling. Did hear reports a while back, whether it's still true or not, that Iran Air, um, when they fly their jets into here, they're not able to refuel here. Um, so they have to operate the aircraft with with enough fuel from um, from whence they came uh, to their destination and back on um, on without any top up of fuel, which is quite amazing, really. Again, shows testament to the aircraft, but it just means um, heavier takeoff and land. Well, more so, heavier landing uh, weight here at uh, at London Heathrow when it comes in. Oh, okay. Hercules retirement flight. Who's that? That's uh, that. Is that that uh, semi acceptance style? Doesn't sound very uh, Pratt Whitney esque. Now, 
what's the undercarriage? Oh no, 787, yeah. There it is. Folks, just going to give you a quick overview of where we are geographically here at London Heathrow. Julie's going to throw the map. Hold on, not just yet. Could get a funk as well. Bye, man. Yeah! Okay, GP map. Please. Okay, you can hear me, but you can't see what's going on, folks. There is the map. We're looking from the south up to the north. Uh, look at the, uh, the, um, um, yeah, position number three, ladies and gents. Courtyard Marriott, as you can see. We're on the north side of the airfield, northeastern side of the airfield. Um, and as we saw earlier, great position for watching um, aircraft departing out of runway 27 right or arriving on 27 right, but also a general overview of the airfield as well. Okay, GP, map off, please. So you get to look around all of these um, maintenance sheds, aircraft manoeuvres around the airfield as well, Virgin Atlantic's uh, hangar, her maintenance hangar there, the northern part of runway 27 right, or the eastern end should I say, um, that Oman air jet just um, crossing over the active runway, um, 09 right, 27 left. And of course, um, Terminals two and three, and all the way down the runway to Terminal five. So there's a lot to see from this position. And as soon as, uh, No, as in D, E rated, yeah, D rated. If you D rate something, it basically means that you, you, you reduce the amount of input. Um, so when I talk about D rated power, it basically means that uh, the simplistic way of, say, of it, describing it is that if you're driving a car and you're only putting half your foot halfway down on the throttle as opposed to um, all the way down on the throttle, um, the throttle on your foot is the equivalent of the thrust levers in the middle of the aeroplane's flight deck, which is the power delivery. Um, and that will be preset by the pilots um, before they go out. And that will be based on weight of the aircraft, maximum takeoff weight, uh, or V takeoff weight, should I say. Um, uh, length of the runway, uh, wind conditions, etc., etc. But all those factors will be inputted into the into the flight management computer the FMC that will then indicate uh, how much thrust they need to input uh, on on takeoff this is also applicable during landings as well um, in terms of whether they use the thrust levers uh, sorry the thrusters 
um, to uh, to stop the aircraft or it is purely just down to uh, like this guy's using thrust levers now oh either here nice but we generally tend to talk about D-rated uh, for takeoff. Uh, it's more idle thrust that they use uh, with, the, uh, with the landings, whether it's uh, full thrust for, uh, for, um, for reverse thrusters or whether it is a, um, just idle where they will open the doors but not actually apply any power. But an idle departure, uh, sorry, a, a derated departure will be where the um, the, uh, the the engines are not used to their maximum effect. storm clouds to my right you know, out east and the apps vamos yes of course it does uh, they will um, they will you know use the the least amount of power that they have to, which is why, again, uh, you know, as I explained earlier, the, um, the Trent 1000 engine, the Dreamliner itself, is a very intelligent aircraft. But all flight management computers um, will um, will calculate the amount of thrust and power that's needed for the departure, and the least uh, that they use, obviously, the better in terms of. Um, you know, uh, preserving the life of the engine. And, um, increasing the length between um, checks and so on and so forth. Of course, the engines and the aircraft are in a different cycle as far as, um, as far as uh, <coughs> checks and, um, you know, maintenance checks go. Uh, the engines are in their own cycle separate to the aircraft which uh, its frame and so on and so forth will go through a b c and d checks um, the engines are a component which are uh, obviously continually connected um, to the uh, the operations base whether it be general electric rolls royce pratt and whitney whoever um, those engines on that aircraft if there is an issue with those engines it will first of all come up on the flight deck. Uh, the pilots will be made aware by the onboard systems. Uh, but also, it will report any um, any issues back to base, uh, and they will then um, carry out any necessary inspections or on-wing maintenance checks, boroscoping perhaps, um, you know, it depends on the, on, the, on the location the airline's at, the operator's at, whether they've got a local um, firm um, linked with uh, the engine manufacturers themselves who can come out and carry out a boroscope inspection or do a, an inspection. Uh, some of the um, some of the airlines, like British Airways, have their own maintenance teams who are specialist in um, in the engines themselves, up to a certain degree, um, and that is for inspection purposes. So, and, and also perhaps um, removing and replacing um, some. parts of uh, 
you know, like oil pumps or uh, seals or whatever it might be, uh, external engine parts, so to speak. Any components like oil pumps and pressurization units and things like that. Piping or tubing or maybe an electrical box or igniters or I don't know actually I don't think igniters it's all inside the combustion chamber inside the um, inside the the working components of the engine the core of the engine so to speak uh, certainly not able to do sort of like fan blade replacement or uh, um, because that's a that's an engine off off wing uh, repair maintenance um, Simon Dinsmore yes indeed either air part of evergreen um, the freight company that you see the big containers on the back of trucks regularly um, up and down the motorways in and out of the ports um, CMA CGM uh, this year I think it was or was it last year latter part of last year that they introduced their uh, their new f air freight division obviously one of the world's leading uh, sea freight companies CMA CGM now operating a uh, purchasing brand new aircraft as well Producer J, BA have maintenance facilities at JFK. It's weird to see a British Airways maintenance vehicle with the steering wheel on the left side. Interesting. Thank you for that, Producer J. Yeah, most, um, depending on the airport, of course, um, like United, for example, do have their own uh, maintenance, well, tugs here, don't they? Uh, we've got the, uh, the little pink one that they use, little pinky. You see the undercarriage tilt forward then, um, purely to allow the, uh, the undercarriage to be retracted into the uh, undercarriage bay. Uh, it's just the, it's kind of a Boeing specialist design, really. Uh, the um, the pitch actuator on the um, on the triple seven and seven eight seven. I think the seven sixty seven as well has a uh, a pitch actuator on the uh, on the undercarriage as well. Uh, Andy Apps, what's the average age of an engine that has to be maintained? Well, Andy Apps, it really, it, it is literally as and when an engine requires um, uh, uh, um, uh, maintenance. Um, they will go through cycles, just like uh, number of hours and so on and so forth. So after a certain amount of hours, it needs X replaced or whatever it might be, major inspections. Um, general maintenance and repair overhaul is the main thing for these engines like where well, where we saw down at GE Wales where they were uh, maintaining the GE 90 engines uh, pretty fascinating thing to see really um, stripping these engines down right the way through the entire component process obviously the the outer um, uh, uh, part of the engine coming in different segments so they stand the engine up vertically uh, work on it from the sides remove all the ancillaries all the the pipes and the plumbing and the and the power and the, this that and the other um, and uh, they will then um, that's nice Helvetic E190 it says, it's a, yeah it says engines look quite uh, flown on that well not maybe not that one but have flown on a Helvetic 
E190. Um, E2, E190 E2, isn't it? I think they call it the E190 E2. Oh, it's a 195 E2, is it? Sorry. Get it right in the end. John Pierce, if everyone purchased a big bottle of water and a bottle of spirit before they boarded, well, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it's gonna, you know, you, you're taking on an extra um, two litres of water per person. Um, so yes, in terms of weight, it would definitely uh, affect the, um, I wouldn't say the performance of the aircraft because obviously these aircraft have a very, uh, you know, a very high range of capabilities instead of in, in, in terms of, you know, calculating things like that in there anyway um, when they're um, when they're when they're going out when they're flying, you know, um, it's like I was saying earlier on about calculations. Wow. What the hell's that? That's got me. Blimey. What's the tilt? There you go. See the tilt? I was hammering, mate. I thought it was going around over the top of me or something. It was so loud. So these engines get stripped down component by component. Uh, obviously, uh, some of the components are um, are checked using uh, ultraviolet systems uh, to to look for any you know hairline cracks and stuff that we can't see by the naked eye. Um, oh, my eyes naked. Um, but um, yeah, pretty amazing to see. Uh, how efficient and how much effort and and professionalism goes into um, inspecting and repairing and overhauling these engines. engines on these old 26 year old 767s not that they're all old 26 years old but as you can see the big plumes of smoke coming out of the back of these engines either Pratt & Whitney engines the CF uh, or the CF6 engines I think they're Pratt & Whitney PW4000s on that 767 but uh, they certainly you know burn a lot of oil and um, it's like the old cars that you see on the you know when you you know, when you're sitting behind an old car and you can um, you can smell it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like that. Although they are extremely efficient and still very very clean um, compared to uh, some combustion, other types of combustion engines, um, but um, very very reliable and of course multiple changes in componentry and stuff like that to maintain the. Um, the lifespan of the engine, or increase the lifespan, should I say? No, oh. bits and pieces UK. Last week, a Tui plane kicked everyone off because it was found to be too heavy at Exeter. Well, there we go. So obviously a, a miscalculation in terms of uh, uh, checking baggage there must have been. Um, unless it's something that we don't know about and it was like, you know, they put too much fuel on it or something like that, perhaps. You never know. Jeanette Haynes needs to, needs to know how to get rid of SIP titles, Julie. I think that's in the LOLO... Um, uh, French way D 
Does anybody know how to get rid of sip titles? Because I am the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yes, yeah, CC, not as in CC Senora, but CC as in closed captions. Something big winding its way down the runway. Oh, it's going to be big. It's not, it's only a lot 737. <laughs> have been at me being told that mate okay well, what do you what do you want me to do phone up the people I'm having a meeting with can you all go home and come back the next day surely there's something more to that isn't there it's got to be something more to that, mate. You just wouldn't do that, would you? Ned Sigu. From the goons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow! Look at the smoke trail that thing's leaving, mate. It's crazy. Fuck yeah. Wow, look at that. Look at that, mate. Wow! Aviation in 4K is keeping an eye on these ones because there's been some crazy... Um, uh, big shout out to Aviation in 4K. I don't say it enough actually, but thank you to him for every show um, in the comments on YouTube, which we pin. Do we pin it, Jilly? Um, yeah, we do pin it because he's very kindly gone through the whole video or at least made notes during the show. And William as well, apparently. Um, but Aviation 4K, I know, has been doing it for quite some time. Um, we're very grateful to them for uh, for uh, for letting everybody know where they can scroll through quickly to get these, um, these crazy moments. Although I have to say earlier on, um, I don't know if it's worth scrolling through it because I would definitely... Um, watched the whole thing it was just went off for uh right from the beginning of the show to be honest with you it did go a bit a little bit um do lally didn't it ian is he has he messaged me let's just see if he's messaged me Search the end. Vista Jet, nice. This is an Indian carrier, folks. Haven't seen Air India for a while, have we? We've not seen. Oh, haha! <laughs> there we go. We'll usually see uh, 
at least one, two or three even in a, in a show. But a uh, number of occasions where they've come in one after the other or gone out one after the other. Lucky people flying on Iberia today, uh, managing to uh, fly on the A350 as opposed to the uh, 320 or whatever it might be. Mini 350. sent us some form of message during the Anchorage shows. Okay, oh, it's going to be through email then, isn't it? Uh, let me just have a little look here. Kevin, uh, Air India, using Gatwick as well as Heathrow now. Thing, even on email, Julie. I don't know what, what the reason for that is, but uh, obviously any any information you can forward me on that one. Um, I'd like to say hello to him. Um, I don't know how long he's here for, but uh, all the way from Anchorage, man. All the way from Anchorage. The guy's got a bleeding float plane, for crying out loud. In Anchorage. And a beautiful float plane as well. And a lovely little hut where uh, they all have their huts, don't they? You know what I'm talking about if you've been to Anchorage with me, folks. Oh. Yeah, texting. Oh, if I put it in wrong, it's like Stevenson or something like that. Mr. Stevenson. Didn't I? Do you remember I called him Mr. Stevenson? I-A-I-N. A-I-A. I, I, A, I, N. Ah, oh, E, P, E, and U, P, S, Stevenson. There we go. Oh, Stephen, sorry. I'm Hans Christian Stevenson. Stevenson, Stevenson. No, um. Well, that is quite nosy, isn't it? And of course they have. There we go, here he is. I A I N. What's that? Oh. <laughs> That's pretty typical. 14 big tail fins in that shot. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm only seeing 11. 12, 13. Okay, let's make it 14. There we are. Let's see if he comes back. I don't know if he's using WhatsApp. That's the only thing. 
So a lot of Americans don't use WhatsApp, which is quite interesting. Don't trust it because they think it's going to jump out of the phone and inject them with something. I don't know, mate. I don't know. I'm only joking, of course. A bit of banter. Best form of uh, communication ever, to be honest with you. And one without any strings attached to it at all. Use it as a phone. When we're overseas, I use WhatsApp as a phone. Don't even use any. Don't even use any of my phone. All I use is my phone data, and that's it. Um, and when you've got unlimited data, it's you know, it's, um, you don't have to worry about this, that, and the other. Blah blah blah. But anyway, there you go. I don't want to do it. Don't have to do it. I was forcing your arm. Yes, one should stick one's um, uh, Big Jet TV sticker from whence you purchased it. Um, folks asking about the midweek show, we're going to be in New York Wednesday and Thursday for first class and super class members. Uh, a few people obviously missing that from my announcement earlier on. Uh, but yes, we are in New York this coming week, ladies and gents. New York, New York, so good they named it twice. Do, 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 uh, New York, because we've been and and twice. Do, do. What's that, GP? Repeat, repeat. Yes. Oh, this is uh, this is uh, good to see these guys back. Is it Hong Kong Airlines or Xiangxing or Xingmen or Xingxing or Xingzhong or something like that? Isn't it? Capital Airlines sometimes as well, isn't it? I'm waiting to see it on the side. I'm waiting to see it. Xiang Shenzhen. Oh wait, it, wow, He's uh, uh, Ian's finishing a three week holiday in Montenegro and Croatia with the wife on our way home tomorrow, just staying next door at the Chariot, at the Chariot, at the Marriott. Cool, great to see you Ian, here with the missus on a nice long vacation, brilliant. See, when I talk about nacelles, see that front portion of the engine there, folks? Um, obviously, every engine has a different sized nacelle or nacelle. Um, it's the front portion of the engine, which is, you know, the, 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 the air scoop, so to speak, uh, directs the air into the engine. Uh, not that it needs it, really, but obviously um, for optimum performance, but also to protect the aircraft from a blade off incident. Uh, it will. Um, it's uh, lined with carbon Kevlar uh, inside the engine casing there, the fan casing as it's commonly known. Um, that particular part of the engine um, will um, soak up, or as best as it can, any um, incident involving blades that uh, dislodge or crack or break or whatever um, to stop the... Uh, stop any debris from um, coming out the side of the engine and um, uh, piercing the side of the aircraft etc etc so it protects uh, the um, the aircraft and its occupants
Wow, I shot across the bow there. Was it I saw where we were a while ago? Not that long, uh, that long ago. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I saw the. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently, maybe last year. I don't know. Whenever. Um, I saw the um, the uh, horizontal stabilizer trim um, being. Uh, going back to its neutral position which it is there I think is that trim stabiliser going up to its looks like it is it might have been Schiphol yeah I don't know actually I saw so it was are you sure because no it wasn't it wasn't it was because it was uh, it was somewhere where I managed to film up close oh Japan I think it might have been Japan I think it might have been Narita, yeah. We can see where uh, you can see the marking there on um, there, folks. That literally behind that wall there that you see, you can see that that patch there. That is actually a. Um, well, you can see it's much more clear um, and concise on the uh, A330. Um, you can see that's almost like behind that it's hollow because there is literally. Um, and it's very sort of like I wouldn't say archaic because it's a very um, very important part of the component tree but um, that whole thing is a moving component um, literally an up and down moving component which uh, trims the aircraft out during flight and also it's trimmed pre-trimmed again by the flight management systems um, or by the pilots uh, to um, to optimize its uh, its attack its angle of attack um, so the autopilots uh, will uh, monitor and keep that trim at the uh, at the best angle of attack so as to maximize the efficiency of the oh it was anchorage was it john reed saying it was anchorage thank you john it was an alaskan 747 john reed saying Oh my goodness me, Cafe Pacific 747 rolling at 7.47pm and yes it is, I think I can hear it, uh, so double Dreamliner power coming up folks, could go up quite quick because it's probably quite late, uh, 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 empty I would have thought, but any moment now, wow, this is going to be long I think, oh there she comes, look at this. Going to Paris, isn't she? Going to CDG. See that big long wing on her look.
amazing when I when I meet up with friends and they're like, so don't you don't you sort of like get an extra couple of days when you go to New York, for example, and go and play golf? I'm like, mate, whatever extra time, whatever time I have, it's for filming planes with my uh, with my esteemed family of members. Firstly, I haven't got time to go off and do other things. Secondly, I can't be bothered because I'm too bleeding tired. I'm too tired, mate. So I don't, don't want to go out for a meal. I don't want to do anything like that. I just want to get back to the hotel um, and literally have something to eat and go to bed um, because it is very, very tiring. Standing on your legs or driving around or moving around, a lot of equipment. Yeah, it is physically and mentally uh, draining sometimes emotionally um, uh, overpowering uh, when you go to some airports because it's you're, you're dealing with that right, amazing emotion that everybody else is uh, getting involved in as well and enjoying um, and it is great it's great yeah and sometimes it's very very stressful when things won't work properly or uh, you know yeah Wow, that was a good one. Funk here. Make it funk here. Okay, I'm going to need to check my um, blah blahs. So there's the um, Trent powered Turkish 330. Oh, this is very wet, this thing. Oh, that's like a. You know when you see beetles and they're all drenched and wet? No? So, I'm going to, um, in fact, right at that point in time, that one is, um, is, uh, is, um, scorpion. Let's... In my life. Jets in at London Heathrow. Never seen that before. Now you know what I'm going to do. Got my foot stuck on a spike. I'll take that off. Does that affect the audio in terms of making it clearer, louder? Um, just I've taken the fluffy bit off the front because it was quite drenched. Melanie uh, Lascelles, Kenya's tail fin reminds me of the old, the old red coat air cargo livery. For those of you old enough. Now you see the nacelle on the Dreamliner. See how that's, um, it's quite shallow. What's up GP? The Ram. Got somebody um, lined up for departure right now. BA322. Um, it's a Neo Jet, we believe. So that's why I'm thinking that that is an, a 787 engine nacelle. It's just the. Is that yeah? I think it might actually be an engine, um, an engine cradle. I'm not sure, but um, either way, it is uh, definitely some form of component. Yeah. 
yes yeah uh, on its front it's actually on its front um, yeah you can see the that's what that's the part I'm thinking it, that it is folks that part there that's uh, at the front there with the silver s section on the leading edge of that engine um, because it is big enough in it so interesting two Vistara jets in at Heathrow um, it's normally what we used to seeing with uh, Air India more than anything else, isn't it? Anyway, that would be there. God, I could do with a wash over there at T4, couldn't it, eh? Seen better days. It's already landed. Roy Cropper for a minute. No, he likes his railways. I don't know, he likes the uh, Helen Clapp, indeed, Air, uh, Eva Air do have a Hello Kitty delivery. EK5, five minutes, Diane 78. Sandy Gumby, yes, indeed. Um, weather has cleared up. Better late than never, abandoned UK. Good day to you, boot lad. Ian Snelling. That's actually a good luck to you on that one, isn't it? Oh, saw a number of aircraft in the stack, in the in the holds. I think you're meaning there, uh, Ian. Yes. Um, I actually circled over, or I approached over Brands actually a while back. What would have that been coming back? Oh, from uh, from Amsterdam, I think. Uh, from Schiphol, yes, that would have been, uh, came in over Brands Hatch. We came straight in over here, it's a bit of an odd, oh this is uh, Air China again in it. Wow, look at that aero brake man. So this time in 20 years, folks, around about then, um, we're likely to see aircraft like this flying with no noise at all, um, with no emissions either, purely electronic. That's what. Uh, that's the next big move that they're working on, ladies and gents. Alex Hall, taxiing, um, ready to taxi. BA322 uh, would be great for you. Catch us. BA322. Uh, uh, BA322. Yes. Um, have we have we missed that, Jilly, or is? Uh... Jennifer Jordan. I don't think Vistara is going to be operate for Air India, is it? Uh, I think they're big rivals, aren't they? Um, both are obviously Indian operators, but... Okay. Okay, it's our man on BA322 rolling now and taking off now.
flight. Have a good trip. So that's interesting. We did see a uh, significant drop in the number of uh, Air China uh, operations here at Heathrow after COVID. Uh, but now I'm starting to see it pick up a little bit. We've got a, I think a 787 over there and the, um, at the um, Terminal 2 gates. And here's another one, 350 this time. Of course, remember when they did operate in here, um, they would always turn full 180 there, um, park on remote stand. Um, do you remember all the uh, offloading of all the uh, of all the PPE? Do you remember that sliding down the boxes, sliding down the steps, and everything? All that money that we spent that we didn't need to spend. <laughs> millions and millions and millions. On um, mind you, we did panic buy. I think I think England, I think Great Britain panic bought uh, PPE, didn't they? Um, I think a lot of people panicked, didn't they? BA panicked. Oh, go get rid of our 747s quickly, hurry up, get rid of them. Um, got an excuse to get rid of them now, quickly, hurry up, hurry up. Um, no, 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 don't, don't, do, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute. You know, what about if it, if, if it all comes under control and we get it sorted out and then, we've, we're, then we're short of aircraft? No, 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 I'm not interested in that. Just quickly, hurry up, bottom line, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, uh, well, you know, on your head be it then. And um, of course that is kind of uh, a position that a lot of operators are in uh, now um, by not, um, not having aircraft because they got rid of aircraft so hastily. Is that the right word? More haste, less speed. It's more haste. It means more. Too hastily. Too much haste. <laughs> another E195 E2 is it? Whoa. Yeah. Good to see KLM of uh, or should I say not so much KLM but Pratt and Whitney have uh, sorted out their issues or are rapidly sorting out their issues with their uh, their engines let's sit about that better i'm wondering if uh Tilt. Missed it. TRT GP. What's the, uh, what's the weather like in uh, New York? Oh. Smoke? Oh, from the fires in Canada. Oh, what, carrying that, that far south? Really? Wow. Think of all the poor little animals and all that they're being displaced and oh. oh manageable then manageable then awesome great just have to remember this time not to burn my feet remember last time i burnt my feet wore those flip-flops and didn't have any protection whatsoever and ended up hobbling around for the next few days 
I've got my foot stuck on a spike! Jonathan Beale talking about hush kits. Remember them? My old man. It's a dustman who drives a dustman's truck. Um, no, um, my old man flew the DC-8 um, pre-hush kit. Uh, Pratt Whitney JT-8D uh, turbo fan. Remember the turbo fans. Blimey, Governor! Who? What, on the jetty? No, they were all, uh, well, they were New York locals, weren't they? Oh, okay, they were, okay. They were listening to reggae music. Everybody now. Listen for the startup. Gareth Lydiat has upgraded to first class, going to be joining us in New York Wednesday and Thursday next week, folks. If you've uh, got the day off or if you're uh, just going to, you're able to, one of those lucky people who are able to sort of like multi um multi view at work uh, perhaps in a job where they're able to uh, monitor one thing whilst monitoring big jet tv i don't know wherever you might be you might be traveling on a train long distance might be flying on a plane long distance depends on um how good the wi-fi is of course i generally uh i have to say again that um etihad probably the most uh wow Another one. Now this is Hong Kong Airlines in it, I'm pretty sure. Or Sichuan or Swiss. Or so Swan Swiss. Shenzhen. Shenzhen, is it? Okay. Wasn't the other one Shenzhen? Or was it Sin Shenzhen? I don't know. It's all Hong Kong Airlines, isn't it? Air Hong Kong or whatever. Capital Airlines or yeah, yeah. Mm. doing it's an interesting uh oh okay he's gonna go left here i think um this 380 uh at the next um intersection Identifiably much larger. Mm, I don't know, is he going to go left? Should do, really. Otherwise, he's going a long way round, isn't he? Blimey. Now, what's he doing? He's not going to do a one. I oh, know he's going to go left, sorry. Here we go, he's going to go left any second. I think, is he? Surely he is. He isn't. That's a very odd um, exit. And mind you, the, ele the, the amount of time that he was sitting there waiting, he would have been sitting there waiting for those two jets to move off 
he would have had to have gone all the way around here and taxied all the way around there. But, you know, I'd still say that's a shorter taxi than the, the one he's doing now. He's going to probably... Because um, he's going to make a left. Oh, my net. The Boeing logo on the, uh, even if it is just the 787. That's a long old taxi there, isn't it? Uh, Zijian Ding, I think that is. Is it Zijian Ding as a new member? Welcome. Zijian, great to see you here. New member, welcome all new members. If you've uh, joined up today, folks, make sure that you. Um, one very important thing that I need you to do is uh, download the app, uh, Big Jet TV Live. Um, download the app, absolutely free of charge, no in store purchases and all that old malarkey. It is literally just an opportunity uh, as a, a backup for your show alerts and when we're going to be live. Uh, but also, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm sure you probably, as a new member, are already more than likely subscribed to the channel. But for those of you who are not, then um, it'd be a good idea to do so, um, only because, uh, again, you get your show updates. Not that we're, you know, uh, desperate for followers or subscribers or anything like that. Um, we uh, all, our, all our subscribers are genuine um, subscribers and we're very proud to have such a, a, a big following on YouTube um, of legitimate subscribers uh, great to have you guys here and make sure that you uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and also um, follow us on Twitter if you want we also put uh, notifications out on Twitter almost looks impossible to maneuver an aircraft down there doesn't it when you see it from that kind of angle but um, yeah, great looking shot. Nigel Armstrong, 22 minutes out and Cafe 747 is nearing Rouen. Jonathan Beale, downloading now. What's he downloading? Oh, we, the, the app, sorry. On a quad jet. Uh, why can they not cruise using just two engines, Jay Patel? Uh, it's a good question, that Jay. You know, um, but to be honest with you, it would be. Um, I think it would be detrimental, if anything. Um, they obviously power back on the engines. You know, in terms of the uh, the power delivery. Once they're uh, once they once they select autopilot, the autopilot will. Um, decrease the engine power, um, give it the optimum um, power setting that it needs to get itself up to the cruise altitude. And then when once the aircraft's in the cruise, um, it will then uh, determine what power settings are needed, uh, depending upon whether they've got a headwind or a tailwind or whatever it might be. Uh, you generally find that the engines are, are, are um, thrusted back uh, pull back on the power uh, so as to, uh, you know, conserve fuel and um, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, once you're, once you, once you are um, at the right speed, uh, all you need to do is maintain that speed, really. Um, and that is by either, uh, depending on whether, like I say, you've got a tailwind or a. Oh, he's back. So that uh, that's. Um, that's the jet that um, diverted 
to, where did it go? Stansted or something, did you say? Stansted, so all those passengers, would they have remained on the aircraft? I'd imagine they've remained on the aircraft, haven't they? Uh, were they given the option of like, do you want to get off here and uh, head south on the train, you know? Or, uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously they, they would have had to have probably taken on more fuel, I'd imagine. Stanced is literally just up the road though. It's only a 10, 15 minute flight, isn't it? Uh, Chad Hart, thank you, Chad. Very kindly gifted five Big Jet TV memberships. Wonderful thing to do. Thank you so much to everybody or anybody who's gifted membership today. It's, uh, it's a lovely thing to do. Um, and uh, if you've been gifted a membership, make sure you come in and say thank you to your gift or your gifty, uh, I think it's a gift door. Wow, looks like uh, KLM have uh, definitely got their uh, all their E2 jets now um, back in service. Nick B uh, giving a shout out to uh, the person who gifted the membership earlier. Uh, LMC tuning in from South Africa. Good day, um, LMC. There's something in the hold right there. Is he moving from the Biggin stack? Or hold, should I say? Sorry, somebody mentioned his stack earlier on. I mean, generally, I generally, I generally call the stack. Yeah, he's directly in front of me. He's, he's circling at the moment. I don't know if he's moving from Biggin to. Uh, he's entering the Ockham hold, is he? Okay. Look at that picture there. It's going to be a difficult one to figure out the, um, I think Jilly apparently has got the thumbnail for, uh, for today's show. Don't know what it's going to be. Um, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? It's like opening up a little, um, little one of those little um, um, lucky dip things that you used to get at the sweet shop. You remember that? You always used to be disappointed as well. Oh, I don't like them. I don't like them. It's only got it's only got one flipping spaceship in it. You know the Sherbet spaceship. Yeah. Yeah, the flying saucer. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you? Stuart Frodsham looks like some Birmingham flights are uh, diverting to Manchester. Oh, what screenshot? Cheryl Howard looks like a lovely box of chocolates. Yeah, does, doesn't it? Look at that, man. look at that shot there. I mean, really, honestly, that's worthy, isn't it, Jilly? That's a worthy original. Most boring sweet ever, isn't it? Oh, you bought me a box of Werther Originals. What can I say to thank you? Thank you so much. Oh, you got lightning pick. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Oh, well, in that case, yeah. Okay, let me have a look. Did it, did it, did it, did it, Oh, my 
goodness me, blimey O'Reilly, yes. That is one crazy, crazy um, shot, yeah. It's got to be a dramatic one, hasn't it? It's got to be dramatic. Even though that's a beautiful image, I've got to say. Oh, what, the, what with all the, uh, the spray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there were a couple of others as well, don't forget. But, you know. Yes. Yes. Oh, brilliant, mate. Carl, we're very excited. Mike James, Korean triple seven landing as one taxis out. Yeah. I'm guessing that's one of the earlier triple sevens. Where's that Korean triple then? No, no, it's coming in. You said one coming out, uh, one coming in as one's going out. Oh, one. Uh Really? Could be a funky shot here. I think he's a little bit too high, unfortunately. Some yeah, VS four five eight A three thirty from Tel Aviv. on that jet? I don't know. Randy Bushbaum, uh, London Heathrow uh, was the first major airport, I think, to get hit by the uh, the storm cells earlier on today oh gatwick sorry was the first then heathrow and aircraft were being diverted uh, to and from um, the airfields but um certainly gatwick getting a big hit this morning uh, earlier on and um we then um played our part in the whole um debacle got some great a videography so we had uh, two seven right departures we have two seven left arrivals um, with uh, with go arounds multiple go arounds um, go arounds on zero nine as well 
and um, some pretty crazy lightning um, activity or uh, electrical um, activity here at Heathrow and across uh, thunder and lightning all kinds of things going off it was pretty crazy I should what I should do really, for the New York flight I should how long is it how long, what was this four hours of plus isn't it yeah I should download this and watch it because I never watch my shows anymore man and it'd be quite you know quite cool to watch an exciting one like this see how much that wing flex is up yeah 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 exactly I think I will do I'll fall asleep after five minutes I guarantee it best thing to do ever is uh, start watching something and if you're at if you if you if you're it's easy to fall asleep for you then uh, bang I'm gone mate I'm, I, I'm, there's no point in me going on the Wi-Fi to be honest with you Yeah, 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 yeah. Danger HV123 is a new member. Welcome, Danger HV123. Uh, Hedina Tarbin. Rav H, almost five hours. Oh, blimey. Um, well, um, before we go, anything um, particular that... Uh, I think we're done. Are we all are we all jetted out now? Five hours on the on the on the cards. Lisa Bins, Jerry, you mentioned how tiring your job is. I've virtually done nothing except lie on the sofa watching you, and I'm exhausted. I don't know how you keep uh, talking, filming for so long, but don't stop. Talking's pretty easy. Filming's pretty easy. It's all part of the thing, isn't it? So, you know, mum. My uh, my mouth is connected to my cheekbone, and the cheekbone's connected to the shoulder bone, and the shoulder bone's connected to the arm bone. And, uh, that then continues on to the finger bone, which is connected to the toggle bone. Um, so the whole thing links in together, doesn't it? In terms of uh, me talking a lot of old um, so and so, uh, and us watching aeroplanes. But yeah. Always good fun, folks. Always good fun. So I do miss it. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not being all creepy or, uh, you know, or, 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 or sort of like, oh, don't be silly, you know. I do miss it. I do miss you guys, you know. When I was away last week, especially when you're playing golf so badly and nothing's going your way, it's like, you know, I wish I was back in London filming, you know. Um, but, you know, I do, I do enjoy it. I do... You know, I look forward to going away as well when we do our, our world, uh, you know, our trips across the um, gallivanting across the Atlantic or wherever it's made beer. Um, oh, wow, look at that. Watch the gear, watch the gear tilt. Watch it. There it is. Yeah. Man, that was low. That was a long run. Look at them flipping egg. Need some oil filters, son. Yeah, folks, if you uh, if you get the opportunity, Google. Uh, if you want to be blown away by the latest technology from Apple, and I know there's the people out there with your Androids. Don't worry, I'm sure Android will come up with a, a, a solution exactly the same. We're not saying that iPhone are the best or Apple are the best or anything like that. I'm sure that Android will do exactly the same thing in time. But go and check. Um, the craziest thing you've ever seen, Vision Pro, uh, Apple's Vision Pro. Watch the trailer for it and um, and give us your feedback. I know there's going to be people that say, you know, well, it's not as good as, you know, um, blah, blah. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not comparing it to anything else. I'm not saying that Apple's the best. I'm just saying it's unbelievable how far an advanced technology has come and is just about to go as well uh, and this will be carried on through into 
you know, uh, the experience and the vision that pilots have as well, um, where they will, um, you know, potentially, you're looking at uh, a future of aircraft with nothing on the dashboard in front of them. Nothing on the dashboard in front of them at all, other than, the, you know, maybe a mechanical artificial horizon. Other than that, you've got these virtual goggles that you can see everything. You don't need anything in front of you. You can walk around all day long and have your computer. I mean, I, you know, and, and the thing is that what you've got to appreciate is that when you look at the, um, the unit itself, it's like putting on a hat. It's not like putting on a pair of goggles where you have to pull the strap and the strap's all tight around the back of your neck. You've got, it's like comes in segments as well. I'm not going to go on and on about it, but it is just the most incredible piece of technology that I've certainly ever seen. Um, put it this way, imagine sitting on your couch at home, yeah? And you're looking out there into, into your lounge or wherever it might be. It could be in the toilet for all I care. Um, and, and you bring up a movie and you can make that movie screen look the size of a hundred foot screen. Also, you can lie down on the bed and look up and see the sky. Uh, it is just the most incredible piece of technology that I have seen from Apple um, uh, so far. In terms of the uh, connectivity and uh, communications technology, it's just incredible. What's that, GP? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously, uh, yeah, yeah, not just from Apple, of course, yeah. Uh, but to be honest with you, it's something that's going to be way out of the price range of a lot of people. But it is incredible. Uh, but it's businesses. Imagine as a business where, you know, now you're really talking in terms of productivity and uh, that kind of stuff where you, um, yeah, I mean, you just got to look at it. I mean, I'm, obviously you're going to get your, your, your stone wall you know, um, uh, um, like, well, it's not as good as that, and I wouldn't pay anything like that, and how bloody ridiculous. You know, well, yeah, fair enough, but you may not have a business, or you may not have the right infrastructure to run it, or, you, you know, understandably so. But uh, if, before you make any judgment, go and watch it, okay? <laughs> and don't, don't tell me that you look at it and go, wow, that is unbelievable. Don't tell me that you do that. Oh, well, it's nothing new to me. Um, you know, she's been coming for years. Yeah, okay, fair enough, you know. You know, but you're always going to get people who are, who are sort of like, you know, I don't believe it, Margaret. Um, sort of like, you know, you know whatever you want to do, whatever, however you want to feel about it, it's entirely up to you and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just saying it's the most incredible piece of um, uh, communications technology and, and entertainment technology as well. I mean, you know, it basically eradicates the need for a TV and a computer and anything. It's just there, right there. Um, it's like having your phone in front of you, but you've got you've got these, you know, your hand movements do all the commands and all that. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. The real world, well, it, all it is actually, Uncle Pat, is it's enhancing the real world. Um, and I agree with what you're saying, though. I don't know how I would feel about working in an office environment and having a hat on my head all day. Depends on how uncomfortable or comfortable it is, whether you actually feel any weight on your head, uh, all those kinds of things. But it's not out till next year, so we'll, we'll probably pass judgment on it when... Um, when Judgment Day comes upon us. It's always going to cause controversial stirs, isn't it, in the marketplace? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, but also if you wanted to... No, 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 what I'm saying... Yeah. No, what I'm saying is, man, no, 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 what I was talking about, yes, of course, it'd still be a human, still be a human being, a human being controlling it, but yeah, I know, I know, but 
all I'm saying is that it would replace, they have a head up display system on most of these modern aircraft now, uh, which is a HUD, which is available on the Dreamliner and now I think available on the 350. All, all a aircraft manufacturers are, 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 are aiming towards this, um, this, um, for this, this capability. And it basically means that Yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Shoot it down, yeah, yeah. There's nothing to do with artificial intelligence, man. You're in control of the whole thing. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have even mentioned it, should I? Because you're obviously gonna get your Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool, man. You know, if you've got a mobile phone now, then you're part of that era aren't you you know um if, if if you're if you're a person who's sitting in a in a in a, in a house somewhere or, or or not able to watch this of course i don't know how you're watching it on what medium you're watching it on because you're obviously in that in that circle aren't you of people who who have got hooked by technology um which is a which is a you know i mean look at the end of the day what we're doing here is we're making people's lives um happier and uh by having that line of communication so all i'm talking about is what they've done in terms of improving and enhancing it so that instead of you sitting there with your phone in your hand you could be sitting there with with both your hands free and have this lovely comfortable headset on which you know has this surround sound sound to it um and you can have the screen as big as you like you know, um, you'd be doing exactly what you're doing now, but you're just doing it in a different, in a different medium, that's all. Anyway. James Barnes, will it help your putty? <laughs> you know what, in some ways it might do, I don't know. I actually don't have a problem in putting, so um, I'm gonna leave it there anyway. Um, you know, I'm not gonna talk about it. There'll never be an English. Well, there was once there an English. <laughs> we'll always have what? Oh, for God's sake, what's the same flying planes? With, it's, it's the pilot, the, the human pilot having VR technology. <laughs> as opposed to the apple to fly your plane. Where, well, where's the pilot? Oh no, he don't need a pilot anymore. No, no, obviously. Yeah, Siri, please take off. I'm sorry, I cannot understand. Siri. Oh, I didn't know that. It's interesting. Apparently, those using subtitles can now move the the titles around the screen. Um, oh, that sounds pretty cool. YouTube uh, announcing their 5.1 surround sound. Uh, capability coming up oh of course there's people who are not interested in that rather hear it out of their transistor radio with their batteries okay fair enough okay sorry i even mentioned it <laughs> oh here he is love he's on radio again <laughs> well yeah rip <laughs> sorry Hey up, hey up. Have you been down to airport today? Oh yeah, it's got a couple of layers of bread from there as well. Like, oh, oh yeah. Did you happen to bump into a cider man?
Yeah, you don't have to wear it all the time, man. Gordon Bennett. Are you there, Martin? No, I've got this thing strapped to me head. Yeah. Yeah. Although one thing that you don't have to do is ever have to actually step outside your house again. Probably order all your food in front of you and everything like that. Just see this person just sitting there for the rest of their lives. Right, folks. Um, I think we're done, aren't we? Are we done, GP? Um, I don't know, Mirali. I've got no idea. Give me a good gramophone. <laughs> right, folks. Well, um, thank you so much for your uh, for your um, for your company company support um, everything that you do you're a bunch of wonderful people and we do have a laugh don't we eh? all the banter it's great and that's what I miss when I'm away I've got to be honest with you I mean I know there's thousands of people who are free viewers watching but it is generally my members who I'm talking to I'm sort of like but um, which is why it's this why I always like to sort of like try as much as I can to um, to 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 impress upon people who are new members or or even existing members from you know for, who've been with us a while. Um, please, you know, don't hesitate or don't feel in any way sort of um, um, shy about. Um, uh, coming in and uh, and getting involved in the chat because it is really, after all, your channel, ladies and gentlemen, your channel. Um, you are uh, you are the the power behind this channel, and I cannot emphasise it enough. And uh, we really appreciate it as well. Your support, right? <clears throat> Off to New York uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll hand out flight details. That's the other thing, folks. What I was talking about earlier, just before I go. Um, make sure that you download the app and subscribe to the channel because uh, especially members as well uh, because you're going to get updates on where we are and what we're doing and uh, if we come off air we're going back on air etc etc so it's always good as a member to uh, to make sure that you've got uh, you've got all your show updates and do it as a non-member as well as just a, a subscriber to the channel uh, come in and uh, make sure that you uh, subscribe and and and, um, and download the app so that you get your updates as well because on the app at the top of the app we have got the um, latest show blah 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 which is that one there and then at the top of it uh, you get um, where we're going to be next sort of thing you know so um, that's uh, worthwhile downloading but other than that um, I, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for your company and um, for, uh, for keeping um, me company and everybody else as well. And thanks, Jilly, as well, um, to everybody who gets involved. Uh, thank you, Heathrow. Thank you to, um, to, the, uh, to the gods above us, whatever, whoever they might be. Still got that line of uh, what looks like a smoke haze kind of thing, which is like, look at that, look at that. Isn't that kind of odd? We saw it earlier on. See that brown line? Um, Brunei government jet pushing, really? You see that? See that? Oh, is it? What, not in the Brunei livery, no? Well, um, that leaves me to say thank you very much indeed. Look after yourselves. Um, be good, whatever you do. 
do it responsibly. Oh, listen to that. And do it in moderation. Well, will there? I don't know. No, no. Okay, folks. Look after yourselves. Be good. Be happy. Um, respect others. Um, and uh, we will see all our members in New York on Wednesday and Thursday, if not sooner, because maybe we may be around on Tuesday if we get everything set up, um, all the sims are in place and everything's working, uh, then we'll do something on Tuesday. Um, no, we won't. We'll do it on, yes, we will. It will possibly be Tuesday, but most definitely Wednesday and Thursday, folks. Uh, look forward to seeing you then, all first class, super class members and uh, if you are um, if you are a, a premium member then uh, we will be um, uh, putting it out on the following week as well so everybody gets to see it but if you want to come and join me live from New York then um, you can as a first class and super class member next Wednesday and Thursday okay folks look after yourselves be good thank you so much really appreciate your company and your support as well and uh, keep those uh, messages coming as well uh, get some great messages um, from people who um, uh, from all over the world from all around the world the latest batch of stickers are going out folks by the way I'm gonna make sure that I do that tomorrow so that um, so that you guys all get your stickers hope you've all received your stickers and uh, of course you will um, you you're able to to uh, apply for a, a, a completely free sticker uh, just follow the instructions uh, on the app so scroll down to free sticker uh, and we will see you on Wednesday take care folks see you later bye bye